All right, guys, hope you're all doing well. Welcome to the stream. So today we have a single faction tournament and uh, I'm going to be playing Skaven. Haven't really practiced or played Skaven in a long time, but I heard the call of the Horned Rat and uh, we're going to be trying to have some fun. So today we have the top five ranked factions currently banned for the single faction tournament, which I think is good because in a format where you can't pick and ban, uh, you know, that's usually the only ways to really take down those higher tier factions is to have a good pick and ban phase. Um, you know, it would suck to play like Corn and then get like thrown to Kislev or something with Rakshinas, right? So we have uh, the top five factions banned. So that is going to be, let me just double check that real quick. Yeah, we have Ogres, Beastmen, Lizardmen, Kislev, and Greenskins. So those are the top five ranked factions. So yeah, should be good. So we're going to be getting started in just a minute here. Just going to be doing a little bit of follow-up. Tournament starts at three. So we are one minute early. Let me refresh this and tell some people to check in. Yeah, we'll definitely use some Avalanche Mortar today. I'm, I'm expecting to go like two wins, two losses. That's what I would like if I could at least break even while I learn the Skaven. Um, that would be great. All right, so checking here. Let's do this. Probably not going to be queaking it. Probably not too hard. Okay, so let's go B6. Uh-huh. Let me turn this off here. And then we just have to tag a couple more people who haven't checked in. That player has not checked in. Where is he? Rust, something rust. There it is. And then we have one more doctor. Check in. One minute left. Yeah, so we're going to be trying some wild shit today. Some weird super skewed builds that probably normally won't wouldn't work but maybe we can kind of swing a little something something yeah the beast men are top ranked super nice playing today yeah, he picked uh Cathay, which is a faction that a lot of people believe should be ranked higher on the win rates but yeah Cathay is very very strong i, I can see Cathay getting up there and doing it well beastmen no it's it's amco that's not that's not necessarily true traderkin is very good but the reason why beastmen have a high win rate is because of zangors because Beastmen never had an armored front line. That was their weakness, is that their front line would fold, but they had really good mass and monsters and, like, kind of punching and decent magic utility with their, uh, you know, trader can obviously. But when you give the Beastmen uh, access to a durable, high leadership, regenerating front line, it really screwed up the kind of whole nature of that faction. Like, it's pretty crazy. Now, my settings are pretty high. Um, so if you go to my graphics, let's see. Yeah, most of my settings, I have a lot on ultra, some on medium, but yeah, my settings are pretty high up there. Yeah. Sometimes when you stream, it doesn't necessarily translate well. Opening Mass Birdman. I know, I'm not looking forward to facing Mass Birdman as, uh, as the rats. So I'm hoping to avoid Grand Cathay today, but we'll see. All right, so good to be refreshing this. Looks good. And we'll start the tournament. Our first match will be going here. Watch us end up playing Pwn in the first one. The dreaded Pwn Turin mirror match. Uh, all right. Is he checked in? Dustman, is he? Okay, so you're all good. All right, so it looks like we're all set. Um, I've given players ample time to try and check in, so I'm gonna start the tournament right now. And if you didn't make it, hopefully you'll learn for next time. Tretch Craven Tail, I don't wanna, I wanna actually try and win games. I'm gonna use off meta, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna be using terrible per se. All right, so let's generate the bracket, do this. Good luck, have fun everybody. <laughs> No, he's playing Grand Cathay today, yeah. Yeah, he's playing Grand Cathay Pwn. All right, so let's get it. Tournament started, tournament is live. All right, tourney is live here. Last ping for today. Good luck, have fun. All righty, cool. So my opponent is gonna be the dreaded scrambled egg special in the first game. Player has been doing very well lately, for sure. I've seen them in quite a few tournaments holding it down. Getting the W's, T game, all right. So let me get my opponent and find out what they're playing and see what map we're on as well. All right, there we go. Excited. Yeah, Gracier is very good. Gracier is a, a solid Lord, but you know, I'm gonna be trying some other ones too. Skrulk has always been kind of one of my go-tos when I'm not, you know, when you're not seeing power grab, I've always felt like he's really good. Uh, first map is Gates of Ekerind, all right. The rats are ready, here we go. Yeah, we, like I'm not gonna do the power grab thing today, but I will sometimes bring a chieftain. So in case my lord does actually die, it will it will be an appropriate like it'll be how it's actually supposed to be. So Gorich, ooh, Gorich would be a tough one to win with. If I lose like three games and we're on game four and we're just in the pits of hell, 
I might whip out a Gorich pick for you, but we'll see. I, I am not terribly practiced with the old rats. I used to play them in Warhammer 2. Um, they were one of my go-tos back then in tournaments. I would pick Skaven, Empire, usually a little bit of Dwarf action. The Rat Biscuit Bounty. I'm pretty sure somebody already got that one. I'm not sure. Pretty sure. All right, tourney's live. Everybody find their opponents. Is this going to be the day my opponent doesn't show up? Could we be the cursed one? Okay, let's respond here. It's always Professor Opponent's opponent doesn't show up here. It's always him. All right, let me see what Scrambled Egg uh, signed up as, and we can start doing our build anyways. All right, perfect. Go look, have fun. All right, yes, he responded. He's on the way. Perfect. So we should be good, and I'm going to see what faction they picked. Oh, Vampire Counts. Oh, Vampire Counts for Skaven. That's an interesting one. I actually don't know how that plays out. That's really weird. This matchup used to be massively favored for the Vampire Counts, but I don't know what it looks like nowadays. All right, this is, uh, is going to be weird as hell. All right, so let's get you, get these items here. A little bit of this. Uh, Professor Pone says, I have the dreaded Platy, so he is he is here. Oh, okay, good. Well, Pone, you have to just bring double death freaks and just rain fire on the demons. Just go back to the old school, man. All right, so we got vampire counts, the Count Choculas. Interesting, interesting stuff. All right, all right. I like to see it. So we'll get that and get that for the spells. I think that's going to be good. And uh, you think it's going to be ick at every time? Interesting. Interesting uh, predictions I'm seeing here. So far, so good. And then we want to do that. Get this little guy, the little guy that could. Go in to cut that. That is what, five to 10 per second? That's pretty respectable. I'm trying to think of like a combat rat could be good here. I guess as far as combat rats go, you only really have Queek. And I guess Throth the Unclean isn't bad. He can summon like rat ogres and things like that. Uh, Death Reeks are pretty hard to dodge the single entity heat seeking missile. Yeah, they are. All right, cool. Yeah, Plague Monks could be interesting in this matchup. They could be okay at cutting through some of the chaff, although I think the Humble Clan Rat usually gets the job done. Um, catapults are obviously a thing that can be very good. They can rain some hot, sweaty fire on the filthy vampire counts, which is always welcome. You're going to want a lot of Rout Ogres in your initial army because they're solid as hell um, at fighting off the vampires. What are the OP factions? So I just went to Total Tavern, which is our tournament repository, basically, and I banned the top five factions. So it's good. In single faction tournament, it can be really unfair. So this is, this is going to be slightly better, I think. All right, let's get you guys. Need some of those. Help at Abomination has been okay against the Vampire Counts historically. It for sure has not the worst thing in the world, but we will see. <laughs> terror Geist? Do you really think, you think there's going to be a Terror Geist? That's a bold strategy, Captain. All right, sounds good. So my opponent's on the way. Taking their time. I almost had the Curse of Pwn follow me into this match. Maybe some Armored Rats. Storm Vermin. Kind of interesting. Yeah, there's there's a little something something to be had there. All right, let's pop you guys in. It looks outstanding. And then we can throw in another one of these. Release the Pebbles. The Pebbles must be unleashed on the world. Um, then we get you. I think is going to be fine. There are some interesting builds you can do with Skaven, though. I think there's some, like, forbidden tech that people haven't quite discovered yet. All right, so I like that. That looks good. These guys are very expensive. I don't know why he still costs so much. Oh, it's because we almost brought all those abilities, which were super unnecessary. All right. So that looks nice. I'll throw in one Skaven Slave Spear in the back, and I think our starting army is good. Lizardmen are pretty top tier. They, um, I mean, they could have been a faction that we let slide today for sure. We could have been like, ah, you know, it's fine. But they are, Lizardmen are like a very, very top tier faction. They're incredibly good. Pit Fighters of Helm's Deeper, also welcome inclusion. I wish Doom Wheels were slightly better here. That would be cool if they were, but sadly they are not. Uh, the Globes are not super good. The Death Globes are a little bit stronger, but the, the regular Poison Wind Globes are not so good nowadays. But again, I don't know Skaven super well at the moment, so um, we're going to be we're gonna be learning the old-fashioned way. Okay, let me do this. New link for you. All right, sending my opponent this. Cool. Buy all the luxury abilities. <laughs> yeah, maybe we will. Hey, thank you for the donation, man. Happy birthday, old man. Team Pierogi all day, man. Chest. How you doing? 
Yakshay Mash, Yakshay Mash. Okay. What about Warp Grinders here? They always felt interesting. Storm Vermins feel a little bit janky, although the, the Council Guard aren't a bad choice. You know, getting Unbreakable Halberds against the Undead can be okay to have them kind of saturate their way in. The Morse Guitar is Hellion. What about that? Like the ROR Mutant Rat Ogre just to hunt down White Kings? That actually feels like kind of a cool idea. Don't know how that's going to go, but maybe that's a tech we kind of invest in here. All right, now we're getting a little bit crazy. I like this. Just got to max out on a couple more units here. So that looks good. Probably don't need this. It's going to be a little bit hard to defend. And uh, would we actually have to worry about my opponent bringing uh, Grave Guard? Eh, Grave Guard against Skaven aren't like super good because we have access to Rat Ogres. So I think that's not like the biggest threat in the world. But the Vampire Counts are upon us. Yeah, I think this is okay. Throwing that bad boy in. Blightscap's Plague Pack is a cool one. Yeah, Sensor Bearers in general have like some weird applications here. They can they can really melt through a lot of Vampire Count stuff. The uh, the magic damage is I think useful against some ghostly units, and they do also just hit like absolute trucks. Yeah, Blightscap's Plague Pack. Man, I haven't that's a unit I haven't seen in a long time. There's a lot of like big fancy Skaven stuff I want to bring, but I just can't quite afford. Trixie Hobbitses, man. Trixie, Trixie. What do they actually do? So they, have, they do the Scourge and they do a little bit of decent damage here and there. All right, all right. I like this. This is fun. This build's fun. Well, how good it's going to be, but we'll find out. Vampire Count's probably going to come in with double White King. Really trying to disrupt my lines. Be extra scary there. But Mutant Rat Ogres um, can definitely surprise people if you throw them in. But I don't know if I'm going to go in with just basic Mutant Rat Ogres. I don't know. Hard to say. All right, guys, we're about ready. Let's have some fun. Yeah, Kislev is insanely good. They're, they're, ogres are banned because they're super overpowered, yeah. And also, on top of that, they have bugs, which make their faction even more OP. Ogres are immune to being knocked down and to being stunned. So usually when units are knocked down and or stunned in this game, they lose DPS and lose overall efficiency because they're not attacking. Um, but ogres are immune to that. So the faction is not only overpowered in at its core nature, but they're also bugged to hell. Um yeah, so that's, that's you know, a bit of an issue, right? A bit of an issue, to say the least. All right, I'm liking it. Yeah, you guys talked me into bringing some wonky stuff. And we'll see if it works. Yes, yes. Stefan, first time I've donated to a streamer. Hey, man, I really appreciate that. Uh, but it's both our birthdays. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. I I'm glad it's your birthday. My birthday is actually in July, but I do greatly appreciate that. Yeah, we're playing Skaven today. It's going to be fun. Oh, my opponent's got a cool banner over there. Let's let's do a cool banner of our own. We'll do Clan Carrion. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Clan Carrion. Greenskins are really, really strong. Greenskins are like... Um... All right, no, no problem. So Greenskins are like an S-tier faction. They are super easy to play and super like strong. Basically, Wurzag breaks the entire faction. Um... He just gives plus massive melee attack buffs to the entire army nonstop, like literally like for like 80% of the game. And on top of that, you have the wall with that also. So they're just like effects are crazy. Hey, thank you, Stefan. I really do appreciate the donation, man. He's lying his birthdays today, dude. If you guys were the ones keeping track, I'd be like a million right now. All right. Doing the rats proud. Uh, let me see if there's any admin work. Nope. Looks like it's all good. We're getting a bit of a late start. Our opponent, I think, had something going on and just maybe forgot they signed up for the tournament. But they're back now, which is good. And uh, let's get it, man. Here comes the scrambled egg special. Anywhere between, I mean, 30 and 50. I'm 35, so we're, we're somewhere in that ballpark. Definitely in the demographic of the aging RTS gamer. Man, I had so much fun with Dune Spice Wars last night. That was so great. Um, I'll go over the build once we load into the game. So it looks like we're loading in right now. And uh, let's get rid of the art. Yeah, but Dune Spice Wars, man. That game is great. It's really, really fun. Um, we had some multiplayer matches last night. Highly recommend it if you've got a, friend, a group of friends to play with. Yeah, I mean, Greenskins can be beaten, but it's not easy. They're very tough. They're very, very tough. Uh, Platypus playing on Demons of Chaos today. It's going to be interesting to see how far he gets with those. We had a really cool replay of him winning the other day with Demons, so... Old enough to be the next president. What is that? What is the actual... Yeah, I don't know what the actual age... If there's, like, age requirements, whatever. Obviously, there's something. Okay. 
So Gates of Ekron, pretty small choke point map. Playing the side is going to be tricky against Count Chocula. They can definitely do it. Oh, Command and Conquer 2. That was such a good game. Red Alert, Command and Conquer 2. That was like one of my all-time favorites. Remember the Haggard Conscript Rushes? Oh, yeah, dude. It was great. And then like all the characters were super fun. Lots of good stuff. Lots of good stuff indeed. Oh, you joined the Dune stream a little bit late. Didn't know what was going on. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's it's not too complicated once you play it a couple times. It looks overwhelming, but then it's, uh, it's doable. Yeah, I'm 35, Paul. Yeah. All right, guys. So the rats are here on Gates of Ekrand. Um, we are playing the Vampire Counts. And what we got is going to be a front line of Skaven Slaves. The most proud of their people. Um, so we're going to take you four and have them be the front line just getting massacred for the Horned Rat. We'll send one of you over to the side point just in case my opponent doesn't play it at all. We got Clan Rats in the secondary. Good, good. A single Death Glow Bombardier just to put some hurt on infantry units. And behind them, we're going to have the Rattling Gunners of Doom. I'm going to start them out in the bushes and make them invisible at first. Night Runner Slingers and Night Runner Slingers just to throw out like Corpse Guards and Monsters in case they have any. Scroll Daddy is here as well. Yeah, you got to go with Skrulk. He's just so cool. And we have a single Warlock Engineer for Howling Warp Gale because you really need it. Let's get Ogres and Ogres and then the Spears in the back. So we're just going to have like a nasty push like up the center here. And these guys are going to go to the side objective and Rattling Gunners will eventually pop out of the bushes. So Skrulk's always been good against Vampires. A little bit susceptible to Gooning, but his AoE damage from Rod is really good. Lieber 1 Shotticus is basically like a Spirit Leech. So you can use that to finish off good characters and, you know, all that stuff. So, yeah, Queek. Queek could be fun. He, he could have been okay here. Uh, in reserves, we got some cool elite units. Normally you don't see them. Morse Guitars Hellion. We got Plague Pack. We got some basic Plague Monks. My opponent looks like he's ready. Yeah, oh, never mind. He's got 17 models. I thought he ready it up. Okay. Well, should be fine. Okay, wow. He was, he was completely ready to go. All right, so do this. And then we can send you over here, do that. A little bit of invisibility, move you rats up this way. And let me get my game sound on. Is my game sound on? Yes, it seems to be good. All right. So we need to take inventory of the army. Um, we got, yeah, looks like skeletons, crypt horrors, most of the usual suspects. We got a little bit of a creeping rat play over here. And uh, these guys are currently invisible for another minute. So we're going to get them back up on the high ground here where they're going to have a super, super good angle to shoot. And it is going to be a Master Necromancer. Wow, that's an interesting pick. The thing is, if the Master Necromancer gets hit with a Howling Warp Gale and then just gets like absolutely obliterated by my guns, that could just be a very, very quick win for us. So um, let's have some fun and call in the Plague Pack. I think that's going to be rad. A lot of Cryptors coming out. Double White Kings. Okay, so against Double White King, we need to call in, I think, the big hitters, which cost 1650 So... Because those White Kings are really disruptive against Gaven. Like, really, really disruptive. We need our big monster to kind of take them down. Master Necromancer pick is cool, though. All right, so you guys go out here. Go jump on that. And then we just kind of defend on this point here. Like so. And we need to get the big man out. Like 1650, man. That guy's so expensive. Yeah, I'm thinking he can maybe beat down the White Kings, though. We're going to have to see. I've never, like, tested this. So it's going to be our, our first look at that Duel of Fates. All right, side point looks like it's going to be given to us. And uh, we got our rats. Let's get them set up like so. We can go a little bit further up. Yeah, that looks good. And then get the machine guns back here. All right, so we got to watch out where the Master Necromancer is going. Definitely need to keep Howling Warp Gale in the back pocket. So let's get you back here. And we have the Morse Guitars Hellion coming in. Slingers can start throwing at whatever they can reach. Probably the Corpse Guards is what it's going to be when the battle actually starts. All right, Skrulk Daddy. Lieber one Shotticus needs to stand to the ready, too. We'll need Ogres. Looks like it's going to be Skeleton Spears. Skrulk's just going to be cackling about. Now we got two objectives. So with my opponent hyper-focusing on this objective, it means we can kind of just play this uh, play this point here. All right, Morse Guitars has arrived. Morse Guitars should be able to bully these guys a little bit. Um, no heavy ranged at the moment. We got the Rattling Gunners at the back. My opponent not engaging quite yet. But if those White Kings run up, we're going to punch them in the face with this guy. And keep you at the ready, General. So weird not playing Empire. It's so weird. All right. So the side point belongs to us. Vampire Counts looks like they're trying a little bit of funny business here. So let's get these guys around and send the Warlock Engineer to kind of screen him. And now for the call-ins. Um, I don't know if it's like worth calling in. Like it's mainly Cryptors and things like that, right? So I think we could just call in. Ah, we could do the Plague Pack. They're pretty good at melting like whatever they touch, basically. All right. So you guys stay here. 
on the side and you Morse guitars move in. Oh, it's just scabs crates. Okay, that's fine. We don't mind that. It's just it's just haggard clan rats, you know. They they all get massacred for the horn rat all day every day. All right, so yeah, we're happy to chill because we're going to get an objective advantage and he'll probably just like use the scabs crates to the best of his abilities. Scroll could run up and use some rods, but I want to wait till they're a little bit more bunched up. We see Felbats being called in, which means um, they're probably going to be diving our various weapons teams, so we need to make sure we're adequately protecting those. And we can run in and take a punch on this White King. I kind of want to see how that goes. Let's get some more Clan Rat Spears, move those guys up. And we're going to go and see if we can get a freebie here. Any, any sort of damage helps. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so now we just run away. Not bad at all, not bad at all, but yeah, you can see those White Kings able to give the damage back, which is a little bit scary, so, alright, let's move you guys up this way. Vampires should look like they're going to build up and kind of play a more cautious game. Alright, so we got more spears coming, the rats are chilling, and it looks like they're eventually going to go now, so yeah, they're, they're on their way. So let's get the slingers, and have them start throwing at uh, the corpse carts with the unholy lodestone, and we'll throw down a summon here to block them up. Clan rats, old school Skaven style. Yeah, just kind of disrupting wherever you can these machine guns should be at the ready and you guys can start throwing here we got the double white kings coming in and we need to get that corpse guard down like stat if we can all right morse guitars hellion we can send the rats in to go fight here so we'll get some rattos moving up this way it looks like a little bit of side pressure is going down here plague pack on the side can just kind of sit back for now and the morse guitars hellion can go start pounding these and we can go ahead and do a howling warp gale on the bats here up in the sky and yeah, we do have the Plague Pack, so it shouldn't be too bad. All right, let's machine gun those guys down. Looking good. So far, the big stinky's doing all right. We got a lot of ogres moving in. A whole lot of ogres. Um, these are skeleton warriors. But look at the machine guns just ripping it up here. Isn't that awesome? All right, Plague Pack, where are you at? Looks like there's going to be a summon here, so we need to get you guys defending. Pull these rattling gunners back, if possible. Um, Skrulk is fine. Let's pop a rod of corruption, and we can go ahead and do a big old breath attack right here against these guys. Then retreat that way. So far, I think we're okay. A couple spears can intercept these black knights on the far side. And let's call in the big boys now, the big rat ogres. Yeah. Another zombie summon going down, which is okay. I think we're in good shape. So far, Skrulk is fine. Morse Guitars Hellion, how's it doing? It is beating down one of these white kings, but the lines have been overwhelmed a little bit. So we need to send some rats up there to help out a little bit. Get you guys up there to help also and come back. Ogres, move in. Secure the Globideers if you can. And you guys move in and secure the Globideers. All right. So if these Rattling Gunners can escape, we might be okay. Let's get you guys back there. And we can also call in some of the Wolf Rats to go nibble on these guys. Outstanding. Skaven leadership. We're going to need it. It's getting very messy in here. But I, so far, I think we're enduring against the Onslaught relatively well. Farside isn't being pushed at all. Like, zero, zero pressure. Um, so let's go ahead and drop some more Rat Summons up in the front. Maybe over, over here. So let's get you guys back if possible. And then we can drop a Rat Summon to bus, buffer that side. It's complete anarchy right now. I honestly have no idea what's even happening. Um, it looks like over here the Black Knights are being hunted, so we could just let them continue getting chased. And uh, hopefully we can drag them down. We'll have to see. All right, Skrull Daddy, you go fight those Crypt Horrors. You guys pull back. Um, value trading is not good. We're actually losing this. So, yeah, Vampire Counts have always been good against Skaven, but we'll find out today if we're going to be able to pull some magic out once we can slow the, slow the onslaught here. Um, side points looking okay. Warlock Engineer is still Mortis Engineering, which is useful. Skrulk Daddy's fighting it hard. Um, did we catch the Black Knights? It looks like we are about to catch them, so that's going to be a little bit of value for us. It's so hard to tell what's going on. Morse Guitar's Hellion is still around. He's still dropping some bows here wherever he can. And the Plague Pack's still grinding, which is good. Let's get you guys to go here, you guys to go here. Anything out of the Vanguard, we can call in some Eshin's Triads, and those Triads can move in against those Black Knights. And we might need to drop some more summons here in the front. I'm not sure. Yeah, globes. Let's get those globes back. Come on, boys. Come on. Get there, get there. Ooh, it's tough. Those guys really just bunker busted our line here pretty hard. We're going to call the Plague Pack back to go after those Black Knights. Maybe they're going to be able to polish them off. We'll have to see. And the Slinger's back. Slinger's back, yes. And then Spears and get into these. Ash and Triads are going to be rear flanking in. The value's kind of okay. It's not the worst. We do manage to get those Black Knights over there. So let's send some of these guys to his point. You know, maybe he'll run out of steam here. We're not sure. All right, so let's drop another little AOE punishment. And we have the Triads moving into the back of both Black Knights and Cryptors, which is going to be very good for us. And yeah, he's still chasing those Rattling Gunners, which is fine. Um, maybe we need to do a little bit of unsummoning. Who knows? All right, Skrulk, we need to get you in the epicenter of action. We do get a big surround here. You see this pocket? This is like actually not terrible for us. And uh, we can drop some more summons here. Morse Guitar's Hellion is still working on those White Kings. We're going to go back. Ooh, we actually have a Mortis Engine coming in. Okay, that's a little bit scary. 
But yeah, we start to creep back on value a little bit, but remember, he has healing and we don't. So that's like the one big problematic thing. Morse Guitar is going to go after this, and uh, let's get you guys going and do a little bit of a breath attack there. Throw the pebbles at the Crypt Horrors, and you guys probably get unsummoned here. And we do win that fight in the forest. All right, so let's move you guys up this way. We are stealing our opponent's back point, which is pretty funny. Pop this, and Morse Guitar's Hellion is all over that Mortis engine, so we're going to need to do Libra one Shotticus on that thing. Start wearing it down if we can. Outstanding, outstanding. A couple rats are hanging in there. Pebbles for the Pebble God. And what Collins do we have here now? So let's get some Plague Monks coming up. All right, you guys just need to move. And you rats can hustle across this way. And yeah, the Mortis is getting beat up, but it's going to be a problem now. We don't want our Plague Pack to get Mortis. That's going to suck. Granted, we are getting some nice little uh, buffs there. But yeah, we need to hunt that Mortis engine down. So we're hunting it. Um, let's get these Gaven Slave Spears back. Um, we do have more rats coming to help, but they're a little ways off. Black Knight's up and up. And uh, cool, we need to get you guys like over here, stat, to try and hold this backfield position. All right, Scroll Daddy. More Skitar's Hellion needs to just be spam clicking on that thing to try and wear it down if possible. Um, we have some spears here. Let's get them in there to help out. The Mortis Engine is really causing a lot of havoc now. Let's go ahead and throw some more of these in. And just keep the Morse Guitar's Hellion trying to hunt this thing down. I don't know if it's going to be able to, but what do we got back here? Zombie summons and shit? Okay. Looks like it's mainly just zombie summons. All right, so we're going to pay for some overpriced Rat Ogres. Yes, perfect. These Globideers need to just throw and see if they can nuke this thing down and get lucky. This position could fold. It definitely could fold. Our Warlock Engineer, I think he died like a long time ago. Let's get you on the pebbles here. Yeah, the Mortis Engine, we can't really get to it. It's very problematic. We might have to just pull back here. All right, so it looks like a summon's going to be going down here. Let's call these ogres in, pull you guys back. We can't afford to lose Skrulk, that's for sure. Um, let's pop the Rod of Corruption here. That's going to do some respectable damage. Okay, you guys do this. Looks like there's some pushing on the far side there. Ooh, yeah. I know, losing in value against Vampire Counts isn't good. I actually don't know how you would approach this with Skaven. I guess it would be probably Power Grab would be the most effective way, but that's basically cheating in my book. Um, all right, so do we want to call in the Teeth Breakers? I think that wouldn't be a bad idea. Start mowing some shit down. Okay, that is a summon. So let's get you up and go after these. Skrulk is going to pull back a little bit. Maybe, maybe we need to get this Morse Guitar's Hellion away if possible. All right. Do we still have the Pit Fighters of Helm's Deep? We do. So let's use those and like try and form a push of some sort. We have a little bit of time. All right, let's get these Fell Bats. Let's get the Pit Fighters to take down these. Let's pull you back. Skrulk is going to need some milk here for sure. He's very, very heavily trapped up right now. So we're going to try and get Skrulk Daddy away. More Skitar's Hellion can go punch this, and you guys move up to that back objective, see what we can do. And if we can somehow escape scroll from this, I'll be pretty happy. Um, we do have the Libra one shot kiss again. I hate sending infantry into that Mortis, but we need to get scroll away. Like, it's going to be pretty big here. How the hell did they close that distance? What the hell? What Are those Cryptors? How do they get so close? Okay, well, let's just nibble them down with those, and uh, we just need to get away if we can. Get out of this ugly engagement here. So rats and rats and rats need to go there. Skrulk managed to skitter away. Skitter leap, yes, yes. And now maybe we can pop this Mortis engine. We need to get the Fell Bats down. They're obviously going to be a bit of a problem. And we got the Wolf Rats ready. So you guys intercept here and here. Skrulk comes back and um, let's go ahead and get some Spears to move up and screen these guys. And Globideers are back in business, baby. Looking good. A couple Plague Monks being sacrificed to the Horned Rat. Um, side objective looks a little dicey. I don't think there's anything we can really send over there to help. Um, let's just send some Skaven Slaves, I guess. You know, that's the, the best Skaven reinforcements we can think of here. All right, so Skrulk and company are all right. Let's go ahead and Rattling Gunner down this Lord, if possible. Move you guys up. Globideers are here. Skrulk is nearby. He can contaminate. Um, we have a couple of Ogres on the edge. Maybe they're going to be able to win their fights. That's looking dicey over there. It's looking very dicey, but maybe, just maybe, my rats will get there in time. Okay, so the enemy lord gets a little bit caught up on the side, is getting rattling gunnered. That's nice for us. I'll take the scraps wherever we can. Um, now we just maybe value trade here, and if we can get lucky and kill the vampire lord, maybe. Maybe, maybe. We, we can work a little something something here. If I lose this side point, I'm going to be feeling far less confident. Um, so let's get these dogs, move up, and make sure I don't lose cap weight here. So we're going to get them on the side. We really need to hold on to this. All right, so corpse cart with the unholy lodestone. Let's go ahead and get that thing down. The Morse Guitar's Hellion was a bit of a bust this game for sure. It wasn't amazing. Um, we got, yeah, we need to get the deal with those Fell Bats. Unsummon you guys. And uh, you guys can throw pebbles there too. Maybe we're going to rip the shots off. Who knows? Let's see. So we get that. Do we have anything to call in to protect him? We do have some clan rats. All right. So let's do this. Pull you guys back. 
Globadier is going to throw some pebbles at them. And uh, we keep scrapping. We keep scrapping. I think the side point's going to be okay. Uh, those are skeleton warriors. Okay, so you guys just keep fighting here. Let's keep these rats for cap weight. Outstanding. Keep focusing here. If we can keep these machine guns online, maybe. Because we have plenty of time to work with. You know, it's not like we're in like some huge pinch here. Okay, we see the Master Necromancer in the bushes. Globadier is able to melt those down. Corpse Cart gets melted too. And maybe we push back on this point here. We'll have to see. We got a lot of rattos there, guys. We got a lot of little stinky rats. All right, so let's see if we can focus them. Get you. You guys are able to push up. It's going to be incredibly difficult to deal with that character, though. That character, the uh, Skaven, or not the Skaven characters, but the uh, Vampire Count characters there are going to be very tricksy. All right, so how are we looking here? Yeah, we have some Black Knights actually coming in. All right, so let's uh, get you guys up. We're probably going to need a little bit of help fighting. And once again, the bats are coming in to disrupt us. Okay, so do we have anything funny we can do here? Um, not really. And these guys can attack into the back there. See what we can make happen. And yeah, we're just like pinned back now. This is like very classic Skaven versus Vampire Counts. All right, so ogres. Yeah, we just call in ogres, I guess, and try and push our way up. It's going to be so hard to get past those White Kings, though. It's going to be so incredibly difficult. Uh, Lever 1 Shotticus is here. Side points being held, but there's a Mortis Engine coming, which is basically just going to destroy our, our world here. So let's call in some Slingers, Night Runner Slingers, and have them come up and start putting some hurt on that and pull you guys to the back side of the point. We got the two White King characters moving up. Maybe should have gone for like a Skaven like character goon squad or something. That could have been something, too. Yeah, the bats are moving. They're moving and a grooving. Fell bats do it. Fell bat things. High melee defense. Pretty good staying power. Let's move you up. It looks like there's going to be some knights on the way in. So we can get the ogres to go intercept those bad boys. And uh, you, scroll, see if you can take down that mortis engine. Slingers into the you guys. There we go. And um, do we have any like mass here that could really get in and do something against that thing? Not really. Yeah, those, those, so those night runner slingers are just going to get wrecked probably. Mortis engine just terror routes all those guys back. We're so... I think we're just behind now. We're too far behind. Hard matchup, man. I'm not sure how to play this one, to be completely honest with you guys. All right. Maybe just no weapons teams, just pure monster mash? That could be kind of interesting. All right, Skrulk, you got to get away, little buddy. We got our machine guns back, so let's get them up and have them start going after the Vampire Lord so we can do stock. And have them try and snipe the Vampire Lord, Count Chocula there on the other side. How are we looking? A couple of you guys moving up. Let's go after the Mortis. You guys do this. And we can just get some, uh, get you and uh, get some capture weight here. So you guys move up like so. Let's go after the Black Knights here and outstanding. All right, so Skrulk is on the run, unfortunately. He's basically on death's bed. We got an okay score this game, but yeah, that was that was hard. How do we deal with those White Kings though? I thought maybe the Hellion would, but the Hellion was awful. He just got his butt smashed by those guys. Pretty much mass routed. I mean, we have a little bit of resistance here, but I'm not going to waste my opponent's time. GG, well played. He played a great game. Yeah, how do you do that with Skaven? Against Counts, man, that's hard. I think on a bigger map, it's doable. That one was hard. It was like very choked pointy, and they were able to move through the forest. Yeah, tough stuff. Uh, Gorich would beat a White King one-on-one, -on -one, but two White Kings with healing might be able to just smash Gorich. His build is good, though. Yeah, he didn't bring any good quality infantry, which is smart against Skaven. A lot of Black Knights, some of which did okay. They didn't really carry the game. The Mortis Engine was a cool tech. Once my ranged had fallen, I thought that was really, really cool. Uh, without that, you got to hope your range kills something. That's why Power Guy works rats, lets them play the points. Yeah, it's, it's, it's Power Guy stupid, though. GG, well played. GG, well played, dude. All right, so I'll tell my opponent to report score. We will continue our, our business of advancing with the Skaven. So we still have chances if we win our next three games. Going to be hard since I don't know how to play rats too well. Yeah, Gorich would, he would not do well. Okay, a couple matches yet to finish. Looks like my opponent already reported it. Man, he reported that super, super fast. That was, that was quick as hell. Storm Vermin could be interesting. Yeah, like a weird Storm Vermin tech. But the problem is they would get wrecked by the, um, by the Cryptors and the White Kings. You could go for like a Queek. A Queek build, as, as much of a power fantasy as this is, you could go Queek with the um, Warp Shard Armor and Dwarf Gouger and just like go White King hunting. Then bring a Chieftain on a Bonebreaker um, as your secondary character. This might actually be better, like something like this. This is why we're playing today. We're going to be learning rats. I want to play them more. And I know for a fact Power Grab is getting fixed, so Power Grab is basically cheating. It's abusing a bug. It's just something that's kind of slipped under the radar because it's not really OP. Um, but yeah, so like, I don't even consider that part of strategy when playing Skaven. 
Um, Plague Furnace. What is the Mortis Engine on the Plague Furnace? Is it? It's only five to ten. That's pretty low damage. Jeez, that's very very low damage. Help it Abomination suck pretty bad. Yeah, they're they're not very good in my opinion. Ah, cool. So how are we looking on rounds? Taking a look at the tournament so far. Let's look at our first round winners. Maybe we'll meet Pwn in the pits of hell today. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, there it is. All right. So Serkia winning with Wood Elves. Pink Pink winning with Chaos Dwarves. What was that matchup, Hadries? We had a... Uh, I know Pink was playing Chaos Dowie today. I lost to the Vampire Counts. Ghoul Baby won against Drakens. Platypus against Pwn won. Iskander with the Empire. Jeff with Kareem. Subutai won his Cathay match. And we still have a handful of games wrapping up here, which should be done in the next couple minutes. We have about 11 minutes left in regulation for the rounds. Yes. Do Doom Wheel could be fun, but Crypto is counter it so hard. It's just, it's just absolutely brutal. Absolutely brutal. How are we looking? One game to finish. All right. About to go to the next round. Um, let's see here. So, yeah, let's continue on our Vampire Count tech. So then the next thing is dealing with the Cryptors, right? That was like the big thing. And then, so maybe we just go like something like this. We can go with um, a single Storm Vermin. I wonder how the Plague Pack did though. I didn't check them. Nightrunner Slings are really good uh, defensive pieces. And then we just maybe go basic Clan Rats instead of the um, other ones. Yeah, instead of Storm Vermin. Uh, is there any money I can cut here? Yes, we have some spells. So Pestilent Breath and we could do Plague too, but Plague is really just gonna kill Skeletons there. So Vermintide and Pestle and Breath. We have a Mortis Engine. Um, we have our Caster there. Hmm. Interesting. OP trains killing Cathay really easily. Uh, probably depends on the map, Adrius. Yeah, on that map, I can see the trains beating Cathay for sure. Because you can't like get direct line of sight with cannons. And, you know, they can use the trees and stuff. I can totally see that, Hadris. Um So yeah, Triple Slinger. Maybe a couple just Skaven Slaves. I actually like this build more against Vampire Counts. Feels stronger. Because Queek and uh, Chieftain could definitely dominate the fight against the uh, White Kings. The White Kings were the biggest problem. I just couldn't deal with them. They just kept punching through my front line. <laughs> Gen Zits, no, dude. No. Power grabs, power grabs lame, dude. All right. Let's go here. Ogres, maybe. I don't know how the Plague Monks felt pretty bad, actually. I didn't hate the Triads. I thought they were a decent column against the Crypt Horror spam. Um, Night Runner Slingers probably are the way because they can fight Felbats and they also will do very well against um, the Crypt Horrors at range. Ikit, yeah, Ikit with the Blob Punishment. Ikit on a Doom Wheel could also be the best for sure. All right, so we're heading to the next round. Let's advance the Swiss and let's get it. All right, we got Drakens. Let's lose another game, baby. Let's go 0-4 with Skaven today. That's the game plan. All right, so next round is live, guys. Next round is live. Let the suffering continue. And where are we? So we're on Road to Talapon. Pretty big open map. Let's see what my opponent's playing. The Road to Talapheim. Some play claw mortars. Yeah, they could be okay. The problem is uh, artillery against vampire counts is really dumb because they just fly over your head with a flying caster and drop zombies on them, and then they you just get robbed zombie. It's 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 not good. All right. Oh no! Oh no! Don't tell tell me it isn't so. Uh. Alrighty. No, my opponent might be dropping. No. First time in months I've caught a live Warhammer stream. Keep up the awesome content. Hey, thank you, man. I really appreciate it. That's super generous of you. And again, I hope it's not a problem financially. That's a huge donation. All right. Let's check here. And we might have our opponent dropping. Sounds good. So we're going to be casting somebody else's game, it looks like. I'm sorry, the rats are going to have to wait until the next round. Hey, you know, a dub's a dub. We'll take it. Even if we have to take it by drop, we'll we'll get the big wins here. All right, so let me report that. And we will do the drop here. Dude, thank you again, Dave. Thank you, thank you. That's very generous. 
All right, so yeah. Then I need to update the Swiss score here. Should be good. Dude, Doom players. Well, yeah, we'll cast someone else's game. I don't know who. We'll just jump into whatever lobby has a spectator slot. We could also do a practice game, but I think we'll do a casted game just to kind of stay within the tournament parameters. Yeah. All right, so just doing some admin work. Let's go find a lobby. Uh, that's my old lobby. Is somebody in there still? Who the hell's in here? Oh, it's her attorney. Okay. Yes. We got Dino Mike and the Shaper of Fate. I'm down for a little bit of Hyle uh, versus Norska action. They're factions we don't see too often these days. So we will uh, we'll check it out. All right. Cool. And uh, now we continue on. We continue on. I would cast Dustman, but he's probably going to play Power Grab, which I honestly, I get whenever I get sent replays with Power Grab, I just, I just will, it's just not even worth it. It's just, it's just dumb, you know? It's like, it's a faction not playing as it's supposed to. Yeah. Thank you again, Dave. <laughs> no, donation is nothing. Get rid of one. Donates to home goods. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. We did have it. We had um, we had slings and we had Howling Warp Gale, um, but he had a lot of flyers. He had like three or four Felbats and also a Necromancer. Hadrius versus Pwn. Do you want? Do we want to cast that game? All right, we can do that. Let me uh, tell Pwn for a spec slot. Hell yeah, dude! It's time for the Hadrius Pwn duel of fates. Uh, spec slot will cast. So where is it? Professor Pwn's game. You guys ready for the boss music? It's time, dude. To play the play the villain boss music. Uh, power grab is a mechanic on Skaven where when your lord dies or flees the battlefield, uh, it gives your entire army a uh, massive leadership buff, plus eight to your entire army, which makes Skaven exponentially more durable. Um, it's an ability on the Chieftain, but it's currently bugged in the tooltip. Not bugged, but implemented incorrectly by CA in Domination Mode, in which unsummoning counts as your Lord dying and or fleeing the battlefield. Um, so yeah, it's it's a mistake. They've acknowledged it. Like I've, I've talked to them about it, and they're like, yeah, we'll get to it eventually. Hopefully they'll fix it sooner than later. But they know it's a bug, and they've acknowledged it's a bug, or it's a... They didn't implement it correctly with Domination's code. So we're, we just kind of... Yeah, it's really warped the Skaven playstyle to basically just be abusing that mechanic. It's it's a shame because Skaven are so cool and they have so much flavor and I think there's a lot of good things they can do. But yeah, with that, it's just kind of janky. Hmm. Here it comes, dude. Chaos Dwarfs versus Grand Cathay. Um, I would say this is a pretty heavily favored matchup for Grand Cathay, but we're going to see what they got. We are going to see what they got. Don't ask Oh, Play Claw Catapults are amazing. Yeah. Assassins, on the other hand, would be a little bit crappy against the uh, Vampire Counts because the Assassins would um, get killed by White Kings one-on-one -on -one pretty decisively. Assassins don't have good armor piercing, and White Kings have super high armor, so not super high, but pretty respectable. Oh, yeah. Just ban the use of Power Grab. I've thought about it, but it doesn't even make Skaven OP, really. It just makes them a little bit better. Yeah. I try not to... I, I really dislike policing abilities and items and things like that. Um, yeah, so uh, overall, only, it's only if it's like really bad. Like, for example, Malagor having flying capture weight um, warranted him being banned for a while, but we just fixed it within the Total Tavern mod because that was a pretty easy slam dunk fix that wasn't even like debatable. It's just like flying units aren't supposed to have capture weight. What is the requirement for you to cast a replay? Oh, it's as long as it's like, usually I, I don't want to cast replays on vanilla maps. So if they're on the original Creative Assembly ladder maps, I won't really cast them because those maps are just awful. Um, but as long as, if they're on like Total Tavern maps or, you know, it's a Black Ark is fine. Um, you know, those ones are okay. Arnheim and it's between two competitive players, then yeah. My favorite faction outside of the Empire. Uh, I'm probably best. My top three competitive factions if I'm trying to win tournaments. Uh, the, I won a tournament last week with Empire. Um, I would say Nurgle is one I play pretty aggressively. I play them a lot. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's going to be the Zhao Ming show. Wow, the Jolly Green Giant. Oh, my God. Look at this. We got the Jolly Green Giant up in this game. Oh man, all right. This is fun. But yeah, Empire, Nurgle, and Dwarves. 
would probably be my go-tos. Um, I've been enjoying corn a bit lately too. Corn's really fun. Not having to worry about magic is great. You could just like space out and be a potato. Yes, yes. Looking to get into multiplayer. Oh, these tournaments, Sebastian, are welcome to anyone. You just got to join our Discord, and from there, um, we have signups, and it's pretty straightforward. So, yeah, and you can always shoot me a message if you have any problems trying to figure out how to get involved. Just hit me up, and I might take a couple hours to respond. But from there, um, without power grab, yeah, Skaven are viable without power grab for sure. It's harder. Um, you have to micro more. You can't just send units at objectives and win that way. But yeah, they can win. All right, guys. Take it a look at old Professor Pwn, Chaos Store Four Years in the front. Infantry killing power is going to be coming from the dreaded Skullcracker, and up in the sky we have the Sorcerer Prophet of Metal, which is going to be casting the old Final Transmutation, Searing Doom, and that looks to be it. Searing Doom is a very good spell against Gaven. You just, or excuse me, against uh, Cathay. You just cast it on top of the Iron Hill Gunners and those different units, and uh, you do it. Final Transmutation can punish blobs if Hadrius wants to go with a character blob of some sort, and the Demon's Tongue is amazing. This thing is probably one of the best units on the Chore Froster. It does a shit ton of damage. Its flamethrower actually shoots properly while moving, and it uh, it can be very disruptive. But Hadrius is on a pretty big open map here. I would assume he will be able to call in artillery and cannons and all that stuff and deal with that threat adequately. So we got an alchemist here. Uh, looks like the Iron Dragon does have final transmutation. Hadrius has Felix and an alchemist. Some Gisales in the back, aka crane gunners, and uh, cannons for sure are going to be called in. As soon as Pwn gets an open field, there's going to be a cannon call in like right here just to sit on top of those uh, trains here. So, Hadrius with the Iron Dragon. And the Jolly Green Giant, check this out. Now, Hadrius isn't someone that memes, uh, in my experience. He's usually a pretty competitive player. Uh, you're not gonna be seeing him entering tournaments and picking bad units. So, he must have some philosophy here with the Jolly Green Giant, which I think is the fact that he can redirect maybe the uh, dwarf shooting. If you're Pwn, you just put your Death Freak Rocket Launcher on the Jolly Green Giant and you net a ton of value. And a lot of Pwn's success this game is going to come down to how effectively his target priority is uh, utilized. And it looks like the train's going to be moving up. And uh, for Pwn, what you'd want to do is fight over here. You want to go fight at Objective 1, where the cannons have like a harder time angling because of some of these trees. And then you just kind of passively split push 2 and uh, play that way. Fighting in the middle will be very, very good for Grand Cathay. So we will uh, see what he is going to be able to kind of scheme out this way. Jade Warriors in the bushes, and we do have Ye old the Green Giant, the Green Guardian. The Jolly Green Giant waiting in the trees. It's very expensive. Pwn's Colin is going to be another Death Tree Crocket Launcher. Hadri's, I uh, wonder if he brought cannons. No, it looks like it's going to be a Wujing War Compass. So this could be a game, if Hadri's isn't careful, where he get, does get Death Treaked. Death Shriek rocket launchers are extremely brutal, um, but shorter range. Cannons do counter them pretty well. Hey, Sam, thank you for becoming a channel member. Really appreciate you, man. Welcome to the stream. Hope you guys are doing well. We're in the second round. I lost pretty horribly with my Skaven in round one, and uh, now we are back in round two here, and it is go time. So will Pwn move up? Is he going to hustle up to the objective? He should. There's no sense in giving that to Grand Cathay for free. Grand Cathay usually loses on points, so Pwn's going to want to move up. He's being a little bit too cautious for my liking right now. And clearly, he's going to be trying. Hadri's going to be trying to catch him with the big final transmutation. Currently, the spell intensity is going to be uh, how many of these does he have in the battlefield? Master of the Elemental Winds. So the intensity is going to be yeah. So he is going for that. Death Shriek shot does nail those Jade Warriors and does some pretty respectable damage. And Pwn is going to make a huge mistake if he doesn't move up. He needs to. He cannot let Hadri's have these objectives. If he does, he's going to lose the game. Uh, I mean, right now. Pwn should be here, and he should be here. There's no reason not to, with just like one or two Chorf Warriors to initially get that cap on those points. Right now, the Death Shrieks are just kind of randomly shooting at some Jade Warriors. Um, also, the Chaos Dwarf Lord should be over here harassing. Uh, this character could come in and for sure just dunk on Felix right now, but Hadri's, uh, you know, getting a big gimme. Like, this should not be happening. The Chaos Dwarf should for sure be up and punishing, because the Cathay Army doesn't really have any, like, hard counterplay on the battlefield. That was a really good Death Streak rocket shot right there, though. That did some brutal damage. Trains are now moving up, and uh, yeah, the trains could absolutely run over Felix, which would be a good call. Flamethrower shot going down. Look at that, bathing the characters in some hot fire. And uh, we do see the Sorcerer Prophet of Metal here. Final transmutation on those guys wouldn't be bad, and Crane Gunners in the trees shooting at the Sorcerer Prophet, while Pwn sits back very cautiously with his uh, characters, not wanting to move up. But the Jolly Green Giant's in range now, and that thing needs to pay the price. Onyx Crowmen coming out. And now the trains have moved in, and they're going to start running over the Alchemist as well as Felix as the Crowmen. Maybe they'll go after the Sorcerer Prophet. 
Uh, Pwn currently banking a shit ton of money. I'm not sure what for, but we do see one Jade Warrior. Uh-oh. He's playing into Hadri's uh, strengths right now. Hadri's is going to maybe get him with the final transmutation if he's not careful. We do see the, uh, the Chorf Train's doing quite a bit of work, though. Sorcerer Prophet. He can also respond with the final transmutation of his own. Yep, see it? Look, Hadri's is going back human form, I think. It looks like it. Yeah, he's going to try and nail him with the final transmutation, which would be extremely punishing. Pwn needs to see this coming. It's... You know, written all over the walls here. And uh, we do see the Chorf trains running away. So they could split up. The Empress's Crow Men moving. And I do not know why Pwn's giving up these objectives for free to Cathay. He really doesn't need to. Some definitely, definitely massive blunders. And the Death Freak rocket launchers probably should be shooting at the Jolly Green Giant or the Wujang War Compasses. Those things would basically just be near Death's bed if he was had better target priority right now. So a lot of misplays here potentially going to be costing him. Uh, now, as far as Collins go, we do get Bull Centaur Renders and also some Chaos Dwarf Blunderbusses. Blunderbus is going to be going after the Empress's Crow Men, and it looks like they are being attacked. Uh, nice bombard there as the Chorf Warriors decide to move forward. But now it's a little bit too late to move forward because... Hadri's is so rock hard on the point here that it's going to be super tough to get that back. We do see the Crow Men getting beat up a little bit. Side point not really being played. Maybe some Chorf Warriors with carry opens could move over on that side. But the trains are chasing down a Wuxing War Compass. Uh, considering that you're playing against the old um, Zhao Ming Final Transmutation combo, you would probably want to split up your trains. He still has the Death Freak shooting at the Jade Warriors. They should 100% be switched at this point. We do see the Uran and Thunderbolt going down. Not going to do too much damage here. And where are the Death Freaks going to shoot? It looks like they're switching to Crane Gunners, which is a bad target because they're loose formation. And Final Transmutation does go down from Hadri's, which is going to do some really, really nice damage. And uh, be quite punishing indeed. There he goes. All right, so now he's switched the Rockets onto the right targets. Final Transmutation has finished. And is it really going to be on those guys for that long? No, it shouldn't be. And we could see Pwn with a comeback if he manages to come over here and do like a big Alpha Strike. So if he gets his... His, his guns here, both rockets shooting at the correct targets. I could see him coming back for sure. Uh-huh. 100%. On the side point, we don't see anything moving in. It looks like Pwn is currently saving up. And uh, looks like there's going to be a final transmutation response from Professor Pwn. So he does nail the Wuxing War Compass, Jolly Green Giant, as well as the other compass. Chrome Men going to be flying in from the heavens. Felix Jaeger beat up. But this, this 3,000 gold character needs to get inactive in right now. It needs to move in there. Looks like the trains on the side going to be roasting off those Jade Warriors. That's actually not a bad play. But the Baelator's character should be going in and fighting. One Wuxing War Compass does take a beating. Professor Pwn starts to pull a pretty big value lead. The big Alpha Strike engagement here going well for him. Uh, the Bull Central Renders in combat doing okay. Uh, they are fighting a couple characters. Not going to be the best for them. But the Wuxing War Compass could die here to the Baelator's character. And now the trains are going to be able to finish off those Jade Warriors on the side. While on the middle, we do see the Chorfs advancing from all directions. Chaos Dwarf Blunderbusses is going to shoot at the Crow Men. Um, they might be able to fight Crow Men in melee. I'm not sure. Are they going to shoot? They do rip some shots. Oh my god, brutal damage right there. And those Crow Men get absolutely eviscerated. That was nasty, nasty. So Hadri's response with a final transmutation of his own is going to be hitting the Sorcerer Prophet. Meanwhile, Felix Jaeger in pretty bad shape here. Dwarf Warriors and uh, the Bull Central Renders putting some hurt on him. As now the Sorcerer Prophet probably going to want to retreat up into the sky. Death Shriek Rocket Launchers are shooting the Jolly Green Giant, so they are making the correct play here. And we do see the train on the other side going after the correct target. Now, I'm concerned as to why we're not seeing Grand Cannons from Hadrius. I feel like a Grand Cannon in the back shooting at the Skullcrackers could be pretty devastating. But the one thing you don't want to do is attack Xiao Ming. Xiao Ming is basically just free. Like, it's free real estate. He's super, super... Um, he heals to full just automatically with his ability, so... Going after him is a mistake. Pwn needs to flee the scene and find a way to shut down these Iron Hill Gunners. Otherwise, he's going to lose his lord. So it looks like he's going to drop a Searing Doom on those bad boys. That'll do some good damage. Hadri's might dodge it. We're not sure. And it does make good contact here. Side objective taken. Now the trains are going to be Tokyo drifting into the backfield. For sure, need to go after the Iron Hill Gunners. And the Jolly Green Giant, like I said, was the appropriate target. It's just so much free value. And taking down 2,000 gold of your opponent's assets are big. Good play here by Pwn, though, going after Felix. Felix is definitely the target you want to go after, getting rid of the healing and that kind of durable ground presence. Here are the trains rolling through dirty. The Jolly Green Giant getting nailed in the back by a rocket on the other side. Good flank by Professor Pwn. This is really nice. He manages to sneak around at the Hobo Goblin Riders, and he's going to get right on top of those uh, guns there. So we do see the Crane Gunners getting taken down there, and that is a big, big grab, as now the Chaos War Warriors might have a little bit of a better fighting chance here. Guns on their way up. Felix Jaeger still hanging in there. Middle objective being held. And uh, the Rockets are doing good work. What the hell are those things? What the hell is that? You guys see that? That was like some weird-ass animation right there. I have no idea what that was. The middle objective is being contested. Iron Hill Gunners are going to be a problem. On the backside, we do see Hobgoblin Sneaky gets being called in as the Chorps are sending up more and more infantry. But Hadrius with very, very good Iron 
Iron Hail Gunner play, a bit of a tongue twister there, but even still, they are doing good work. Jolly Green Giant at about 585 HP, certainly paying the price as now the Hobo Goblins able to disrupt the backfield, taking down the Crane Gunners. A uh, smart play would be to run them over here, shut down these guns if you can, because if you keep letting the Sorcerer Prophet get nuked, that's going to let Hadrius get back in the game on value. And you're already pretty far behind on points for sure. So Wolf Rider is coming in. Uh, that will mitigate the capture of the side objective. Nice Comet by Hadrius there. Does nail the Blunderbusses. Looks like the Blunderbuss is now going to go after Zhao Ming, but Zhao Ming can obviously just heal through that. He doesn't really care too much. Train's causing quite a bit of havoc. It looks like they're going to be getting Iron Hailed right here, so this train needs to drift over here if it can and go after these Iron Hailed Gunners, if possible. In the woods, we do get some Hobo Goblin Riders kind of hanging out on vacation. And now the Rockets have successfully finished off the Jolly Green Giant, so the next best thing would be to take out these Wuxing War Compasses uh, just to get rid of the capture weight and the presence that they provide and some of the Winds of Magic shenanigans. We do see Chore Fours with Great Opens moving up. Side point is controlled, so it looks like the Hobgoblin Seeky gets to arrive on the point and the Jade Warriors here will fall. And yeah, honestly, this game is pretty winnable for both players. Um, I would say Pwn is probably at the disadvantage just because he's behind on points by so much and Hadrius is a really scrappy player. But overall, Pwn is pretty well ahead on value. But there is that healing from Zhao Ming. So the big thing is going to be uh, to try and ignore Zhao Ming, right? Another bombardment going down, more bull central renders with great weapons. And the side objective is firmly controlled here by the forces of, uh, of the Hobo Goblins. We see the Hobgoblin Wolf Riders and the Sneaky Gits, both of whom should be able to fight pretty well on that side point. Train still causing around, running a pretty good disruption here. On the far side, we do see the objective being snaked here by Professor Pone, but there is a response from Hades of the Peasant Horseman. Peasant Horseman should lose the Hobgoblin Sneaky Gits, I think. Now they have more HP, though. Yeah, it depends on who gets the charge, I suppose. We'll have to see. But more rockets appear to be going after Zhao Ming. One train does pay the troll tolls. The middle objective does start to flip to the Chaos Dwarves, albeit very slowly. And on this point, we do see the Hobgoblin Sneaky gets. They're eager, trying to fight off multiple cavalry units. That's going to be a tough one for sure. Moving back to the middle is the Sorcerer Prophet using his pistol. And we do see the Wuzhang War Compass starting to go down here for sure. On the backside, Chaos Dwarf Warriors have moved up. And Blunderbusses should start shooting at these Halberds if they can. Big Final Transmutation going down. Does hit a couple units. Death Streak Rocket Launcher is hitting Xiao Ming. The problem is he's just going to heal the full, which is going to be very devastating. Hobgoblins somehow are being outcapped there, but it looks like they do stabilize that objective. Meanwhile, on this side, we do see Bull Center Renders. They should just sit on this point and get that cap if they can, because Pwn is really pressed for points right now. He's winning on value, and if this game had another, you know, five to ten minutes, I think it'd be a pretty clear point that I think Pwn might have the advantage to win. Although Zhao Ming's healing, I guess, could put that uh, paradigm on its head. So shotguns from the Chaos Dwarves into Grand Cathay's forces. Doing some really solid damage. Those halberds are getting absolutely melted. Iron Hail Gunners, or excuse me, the uh, the Chaos Dwarf Blunderbusses, those things do a serious amount of damage. Sneaky gets get the objective. Sorcerer Prophet going to be moving in to cause some disruption. Side point. Ooh, where did Pwn go with his boys? Yeah, he chased a lot of these. He's going to need to get that objective soon, though, because he's, he's in a triple cap situation. This is going to be very tough. I mean, he needs to get objectives to slow down Hadri's uh, roll to victory here. So Rockets keep going. Not sure what they're shooting at now. Probably could start targeting the Iron Hill Gunners. Wouldn't be a terrible idea. Sneaky gets desperately trying to fight on the side point as the Iron Hills do some work here. And what Collins are we going to see from old Pwn Dog? It looks like on the side, this objective will for sure flip. And then there will be a little bit of a crash from the other side. Searing Doom going down on the Iron Hill Gunners. This has been a really good game, by the way. It's been incredibly solid. But I think the Chaos Dwarfs are going to lose this point unless he gets some reinforcements over here. The Iron Dragon moving in and just putting a huge tail whip down on the uh, Blunderbuss character, on the Dwarf character, yeah. So he's going to be on the run. Chorfs don't really have too much momentum here. Side point's going to be captured. I think Hadri's probably just wins this on points, I would suspect. But honestly, this has been a good game. I think with some, if there were slightly less misplays in the beginning, if Pwn had just grabbed the objectives, um, I think that he could have won this game. I, I just, little things. And when you're playing a player of the caliber of Hadri's, you can't really afford to make too many mistakes like that. So now these guys going to be crushing across. We do have the shotguns continuing to do Daka in the middle. Grand Cathay is really, really out of capture weight on the field. They don't have a whole lot. And the Bale character is going to be running. Death Street rocket launchers need to be switched onto the infantry to start clearing them out if they can. Blunderbusses on the point still firing. And now the Bull Centaur Render is going to be hustling over to the middle while some uh, Chaos Dwarf Warriors for sure need to send one of those there. Yeah, and Pwn knows it. And, and keep one on that point to make sure you don't lose it. And then just start playing all three points and just hope you can get there. You know, hope you can get there for sure. Death Streaks in the back. How we looking? Currently, this one is uh, at zero ammo, so unsummoning time. This one still does have four. Middle objective starting to flip, and Death Streaks with big damage. Wow, okay, I was wrong. I didn't think it would hit the Crane Gunners hard, but it did. So I stand corrected there, ladies and gentlemen. As in the backside, we do see the Demon's Tongue being called out by Pwn once again, which is wild. 
Uh, Bull Center renders fighting up in the point, but being swarmed by Chromen a little bit, not going to be good for them. That high DPS of the Chromen against their light armor certainly going to be quite devastating, but Chorfs do get several units up on the point, and uh, they might be able to flip this one. It's going to be tight. The Bull Center renders getting countered here is pretty rough. Pwn massively ahead on value. Massively, massively ahead, but he just simply cannot afford to lose these points. It's getting a little bit tight, actually. If he could get out some Hobo Goblin Riders up to the objectives quickly and flip it, maybe... Uh, and now comes the flamethrower train. So the flamethrower train is going to cook all these guys off, but he really needs to focus on capturing the points if he can. And uh, moving these Chorf uh, blunderbusses off the point, not good. These guys need to be sent up as well. Hadrius does get some call-ins in the back, and the train able to route those guys off, but it needs to stay on the objective. You can't, everything has to be all hands on deck on the objectives right now. Nothing else matters. And if you can get him, I mean, Hadrius is really looking out of steam. He's got some Jade Warriors coming in, some Peasant Horsemen in the distance, but... And how come Zhao Meng hasn't healed yet? Did his heal already proc earlier, or did Hadrius forget the Van Braces? He didn't forget the Van Braces. They're there. So the train's going to be coming back to the point. Middle objective does flip to the Chowie, um, and there are some Chowie warriors coming here, and it uh, looks like they're going to be sprinting across now. Deathstreak Rocket Launcher going to be trying to put some hurt down here, and it begins. Yeah, the Flamethrower train getting some nice value. Man, Pwn with a really impressive comeback this game, and Iron Dragon, I don't... Did he, he must have already healed this game. It must have already procced or something. I don't know why it wouldn't. We do see the Chowie Warriors moving up to the point. Hadri's uh, dropping a nice bombardment from the Empress's Crowmen. Desperation as the Chaos Dwarfs move over with pretty much everything they have. And they do get some good cap weight there. This is actually getting really close. Hadri's his only cap weight are these horsemen, really. And these Chorf Warriors getting broken by that bombardment might have just won Hadri's the game. Um, that was a really, really clutch play. Because honestly, Pwn is getting the capture weight here. And uh, yeah, routing those full health Chowie warriors, pretty brutal. Zhao Ming, the Iron Dragon, very low. He goes into human form, looking like he wants to get a little bit of final transmutation action. Hobo Goblin Riders do arrive, but he only has 10 seconds left, ladies and gentlemen. What a great game. What a great game. Wow. Pwn was so, so behind on the misplays early, but then he uh, he claws his way back and almost gets the W over a top tier player here in Hadri. So GG well played. Hadri's will get the win, but at the end of the day, that was a really, really good match. That was super fun. Super, super fun. All right, guys. Jolly Green Giant was definitely a blunder. Um, but aside from that, the Cathay build was cool. Uh, and for Pwn's build, yeah. The Death Reeks had plenty of good targets to feast on. Uh, and again, if he had just if he had just captured the points early, and he would have won the game. He just had to not let Hadrius get the triple cap in the beginning, at least get some points on the board, and Pwn wins that game. 100%. GG well played. That was a, that was a great little match right there. So... That was fun indeed. All right, sounds good. So let me do this. Got to do a little bit of admin work for the tournament. Great match to both players, though. Great match to both players indeed. Okay. Let me see. And we just got to do a drop here. Cool. Looks like he should have his one win now. And just checking. All right, perfect, perfect, perfect. We are all set. Are there any videos army builds for different factions? Oh, uh, I would re usually recommend the videos. The videos have pretty competent tournament builds most of the time. So yeah, I would say that's good. Uh, so banned factions today, If it's pretty simple, guys. Um, let me show you. So all we did is take the top five factions with the highest win rates and we banned them. For today because in single faction you can't like there's not a good pick and ban process obviously there is none so it's pretty hard to like play against these factions when you're not you know you can't pick and ban around them so all these factions are playable down here which makes sense because they're way more fair um these factions are all like to a degree pretty cafe is one that probably needs a higher win rate i don't know what they're doing down there but um these factions are just really oppressive honestly lizardmen not so much but i mean if you have a 60 percent win rate that's problematic so they just don't yeah, Lizardmen are very strong. They're very strong. All right. Got it. All right, so let's see how we're looking on the old tournament. Well played to both players here. And um, now it is time for me to continue losing some Game of Skaven. It's time, dude. Let's get it. Let's get it. All right, so we're here. What are we looking at? A couple games to be finished. The Martin and Scrambled Egg Special, Subutai and Iskander, and Ioba and Renegade Moose. No, Lizardmen are a top tier faction. They're really good. They're really, really good. What about just banning Wurzag and Mama Stank? Ah, eh, you could, but I don't I don't like policing individual characters. 
Chaos Dwarfs are lower tier because their um, they're, they're infantry are too expensive. That's a big problem. So like Chaos Dwarf Warriors and all their infantry are just really mediocre for their cost. They're really, really um, just overpriced, really. Yeah, so it's tricky. Technically, the old rats have gotten the dub. All right, so we got somebody to drop here. So just dropping him. Got a couple players. If I get a buy around the next round, that would be really funny. All right, so where are you at? Did he get that? Should have two wins there. All right, so I need to fix his score. And then we should be good to go. All right, perfect. Okay, just some light admin work. Almost ready for the next round, guys. It's just starting now. We'd have to advance. It's way too long. All right. Cool. And looking all right. It was dropping. Did it, did it go down? All right, one sec, lads. Hope you're doing well. Why is Cathay? Cathay is strong, but they're very beatable. I mean, you just almost saw Cathay lose to the Chorfs. Like, Cathay is strong, but they're not, like, super, super oppressive. You know, they're not super, super oppressive. All right, cool. Let's refresh this. Take a look at the brackets. Hmm. All right, so the round started about, let's see, 15, 20 minutes ago, and there's only one game to go still. Yeah, so no, it started even a little bit sooner than that. Yeah, so we'd have to just give them a draw probably. So here, we'd give you both a draw. Unless someone Yeah, it looks like they're having some connection issues. Sounds good. Report score for him. Score mirror. Good luck in next round. Alright, perfect. So we've handled those issues. Thanks for the countless hours of entertainment. Thank you. How do you beat Empire's Corn? It's hard. You go mass chaff like Shielded Warriors, um, Flesh Hounds, and Minotaurs of Corn with great opens. And a double Cultus is pretty good. It's it's not an easy matchup. I would say the Empire's probably favored against Corn these days. It's winnable though. It's for sure winnable. All right. So let's see when they report the score. Yeah, the Jolly Green Giant is is very haggard though, in my opinion. It's pretty ter terracotta is against Dwarfs. Dwarfs are already a bit of a a risky one. All right, advancing to the next round. Let's go get wrecked, baby. Let's lose all our games. Come on. Come on, Skaven. Let's go. And we got... Oh, we're facing the Chorfs. Oh, yeah. Here we go. We got a Chorf duel of fates. Hey, next round is live. Good luck to everybody. I actually... I feel like Skaven should be good against Chorfs, but it's a, lot, a lot of it probably depends on the map. All right. There we are. And let's get it going. Hope the meta moves away from healing. Well, the feedback I gave to CA was like to nerf healing a bit, yeah. Well, not myself, but a lot of people gave that feedback. All right, so the next map is going to be Proving Grounds, which is actually not a good map for us. The Skaven are not going to be happy here. Proving Grounds is like uh, not excellent for shooting, that's for sure. Not excellent for shooting at all. So we got Chorfs. So yeah, we got to watch out for the Death Shrieks. Death Shrieks are going to be problematic, but I guess with Skaven we could probably take them out. Granted, they could shoot over trees. I feel like we're in a little bit of danger on this map. I'm not going to lie. So I'm going to try a very weird build, like a very off-meta build, and see if we can make it work. So, All right, so let's do that. And then we can do um, for the Lord... 
Perfect. And um, then we can do a little bit of this. We're gonna do like the most weird off meta shit you guys can imagine. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be very fun. All right. Let's get you and you. I think that looks fine. Cleansing Rune, of course, was nerfed, so it's not as good as it once was. Unlimited power. And then let's get some of you guys. Sneaky sneakies. Let's experiment. Screw it. Let's have some fun today. We don't need to go sweat every game. Let's try some like off meta shit and see if we can do it. All right. Although, man, there's a degree of meta here, I suppose. All right. So, yes. Looking good. And um, what else do we want to mix in here? What else can we afford possibly? <laughs> this build is so weird. It's so weird, dude. Oh my God. Oh, the rats. The old rats, they're at it once again. All right, so we'll get you and do this. And um, what other spells do we want to bring perhaps? It's not a bad one. Can definitely do some big damage if you get away with it. Hmm. He's still a pretty, pretty interesting little uh, character there, used in that way. All right. Yeah, I have no idea how this is gonna go. This is uh, this is out of left field, guys. This is definitely out of left field. Five. Let's get you guys to throw in there. And um, we get this, and we can also get this guy. Although, do we need any of those? Yeah, not a bad idea, I don't think. This is like a Skaven playstyle I've been trying to make work. Um, I don't know how well prepared my opponent's going to be for it, but we'll find out. We will find out. It is. It's the filthy rats. It is the rats who make all the rules. Okay. And then we can cut you. Get a little bit of this action. Hmm. Full Centaur Renders, are they really a problem now? For Skaven, are you kidding me? They're probably going to be terrible. Um, alrighty. Good quality infantry. I feel like good quality infantry and uh, is, is kind of like just something that isn't a thing. You guys are going to like this build though, I promise you. This is very different. If you're here for weird, weird builds, this is the spot. Oh, God. Oh, the rats. Come on, rats. Figure it out. A couple Skaven Slave Slingers. Why the hell not? Let's throw those little guys in there. Trains are one of the biggest issues. Trains are just an unholy nightmare to deal with, right? So we got to we gotta pay the troll toll in the train department. I would suspect it's going to be a train party. That would be my guess. Is there's going to be a lot of those. Um, I wish Storm Vermin were a little bit cheaper. That would definitely be nice if they were just slightly, slightly more uh, well-priced. And you can get you in there. What are they even good against against the Chorps? Probably not a whole lot. Hey, Austin, thanks for becoming a member. I always could have sworn you already a member. Biker Mice from Mars. <laughs> oh my god, you guys. All right, Clan Vulcan, I guess you're kind of cool. Although I think just like throwing more of these in is probably better. All right. Go have fun to my opponent. Uh, let me see what we're doing here. How are we looking? All right, that build looks a little bit cleaner. And we can throw uh, one last unit in there. Yes, yes. Yes, my Skaven. Scurry, yes, yes. All right. I think we're about ready to party. Throw some chevrons on this guy. Screw it. Let's get real crunk. Good luck. Have fun. It's time, dude. Let the let the Skaven feast. More clan rats, you guys. We have to be. We have to. We have to be uh, innovative here. You know, you gotta do something weird that my opponent would never expect. So that's the game plan. Do Zales have enough to stop the? The thing is, on this map, this map is really hard to stop trains. This is like actually. Normally Skaven would probably dominate the Chorfs, but on this map, it totally changes it. It's 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 hard because my shooting is all line of sighted, so there's like tons of trees and worked out pretty well there. Alright, so let me check here. See how we're looking in the old tournament here. Right now play it at 
All right. My opponent taking their time here. You know, the big, uh, the, it makes me a little nervous. Clan Verms. Man, we could try that out. Looks fun. The Horned Rat Preserve us. <laughs> horned Rat Preserve us. Horned Rat's going to do it, dude. He's coming. He's coming for blood. Two Hellpit Abominations? No, that would be so haggard. Oh, God. That would just be... That's like a land battle shit. Because in land battle, at least your opponent has to fight them. To an extent. But in Dom, it's like they're just going to run away from them. And they're so slow and shitty. I mean, if if Hellpits had better leadership, maybe they could be good monsters. The problem is their leadership's just janky. What do you think about Homeworld? I've never played the Homeworld games. No, I've never played any of those. So I'd have to I'd have to learn the hard way here. All right. Which factions? Uh top five top five win percentage factions are banned. Yeah. So you can you can go check that out on the website. Yeah. On Total Tavern. Giselles, uh, if it were an open field map, I would feel extremely confident in this matchup. Like extremely confident. But here I uh a little scared because the trees really obstruct shooting. And the Chorfs have shooting that can go over trees. Granted, I would be surprised to see Death Shrieks here. I would. Maybe against... Yeah, because the Metaphor Skaven is super wide, so bringing Death Shriek seems like it could be a little bit haggard, but I don't know. We'll see. Sub-factions. Yeah, it was kind of cool when we had, like, Avalorn and, and you know, Sartosa. And... I never noticed this. Look at that. There's, like, a little Slanesh Pleasure Palace thing going on over here. That's kind of cool. First time for everything. So if we win this, then we'll ironically be 2-1. and one. Uh, good luck, have fun. My opponent saying the trains are coming, just telling me already. <laughs> oh no, the trains, dude. Oh, I'm so not looking forward to it. I don't know if I built, I built around the trains. I built around trying to stop them. So I'm kind of hoping I, I will be able to, but how come no more land battles? Uh, I personally feel land battles aren't as good for competitive play, which is, and my focus is competitive play. So that's why I think domination is a superior game mode in that regard. Um, land battles are fun casually with friends, but um, yeah, I think at like peak pinnacle competitive play, they're not as good, in my opinion. Again, many people would disagree with me, but that's just how I feel. All right, we'll get you. Get you guys back here. So we went with double um, mutant plus chieftain. So we have triple big beatdown rat. Um, I should have gone throt, but I ended up going Ikit for a little bit of magic utility. And we got some slingers to poke and also some triads for flanking and all that sort of good stuff. So. Yeah, we could get absolutely obliterated here, which would be really funny. But, you know, again, we're trying to experiment. We're trying to have fun. And uh, we're trying different things. That's what the point is. And if we lose, we'll be like, okay, well, maybe we don't try that again next time. All right, let's go, baby. Come on, rats. That's a weird build. Yes, it is. It is, but, you know, we're, we're, we're trying, trying it out. All right, so it's going to be Astrogoth here. So we'll park you on the side, move these guys up. We'll get you up here. Astrogoth Iron Hand in the Train Legion. Oh God, oh God, look at this filth. Look at that shit, dude. Are you seeing this? Our builds are both so filthy. It's just like, well, his is worse, his is worse for sure. Uh, we need to get the Rattling Gunners out like that. Probably like these guys um, to creep up and just put some firepower down. And then we need you to chill there, you to come across and just grab the objective there. And Flensing Rune on that blob is going to be our win con, basically. All right, so let's move up. Get these rats in position. Uh, we'll call in you guys. Do this, and then we can go ahead and stalk them right away. Oh, God. Oh, God. This is this is just such a meme of a game. So we're going to try and get a little bit of skirmishing poke if we can. Granted, I think, is one of them the, the big scary one? Yeah, the Demon's Tongue. That's what, that's what gives little Skaven children nightmares at night. All right, so we got that objective. This one's going to be held by us. We can go ahead and just send like a, a Skaven Slave Spear here, just for fun. For the laughs and for the gaffs. Um, okay, so pull back. We don't want any of that. Yeah, we, we're just going to hang tight for now. We got you guys ready to party. Far side's being held all right. We got a couple spears over there. And the Rattling Gunners need to get in the trees. Maybe we just like play the other two objectives and just kind of chill out here. What is this going to be? This is going to be Demon Smith Sorcerers. Oh, so it's the train healing. Okay. All right, come on, boys. If those trains try and move over there, we should be able to intercept them with our, our boys, our goon squad. You see, they're turning around right now. Thomas, the paint engine, is, is yeah, you know, he's really on his way right now. So I'm, I'm a little bit nervous, for sure. A little bit nervous about Thomas, the paint engine. Um, do we see Death Streakers being called in? We do. All right, so we need to pull you guys back, and you guys need to go up there. 
Let's pull these ogres back. We need to get out of range of the death shrieks or else we're going to lose the game. So we need to do that. And let's move you guys up, do a little bit of skirmishing. Ikit can hide back here. And uh, these guys need to just go all the way back there if they can. All right, so a little skirmishers that could. Let's get them up. And uh, we can go ahead and just kind of stay nearby. The Death Reaker is still in range, unfortunately. So that's, a, that's not good for us. Um, let's pull you guys back. Looks like the train's going for freebies wherever it can. And we can take some of you guys and go up here around the side and hopefully have a good time. All right, so we got that objective. Um, it gets here. These guys will go cause a little bit of havoc here. We'll pull you guys back, move you guys up here. And just hold on to these two objectives for as long as possible, basically. All right. So it looks like Astrogoth's coming. So let's just like run him away here as far as we can. And then you guys do a little bit of that. Okay. So middle objective. Let's get some ogres up, some basic route ogres if we can. Train could come in and we'll try and put a little bit of hurt on that. Cool. Icky Claw's getting shot. Oh, oh, we can actually hide there. Okay. See, you learn something new every day, man. You learn something new every day. All right, so these guys are hiding in the trees for now, and these guys are chilling back. Let's move you guys up. And yeah, now, oh, the Rattling Gunner fire into the train is pretty clutch. Oh, that's such damage. Oh, give me the Rattling Gunners, baby. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so let's move you guys out now. We're going to have to just take this firepower. Let's shoot into this Iron Demon. And uh, you guys move up. You guys move up. Outstanding. And dude, look at the damage. That's, that's so good. That's so good. That's exactly what we needed exactly what we're looking for exactly what the doctor ordered all right so we got hobo goblins coming in we'll get these ogres to defend and uh, we'll pull it back pull it back here pull these guys back and um hopefully yeah that's gonna pay the price all right so it is there yeah that rattling gunners have done great work here and um, now we're gonna need some uh something something i'm not sure what but let's uh, get you guys here and here we have the chieftains at the ready and good. So we've gotten on top of the uh, the triads here, which is going to be outstanding. And now we can prepare for like some cleansing rune action. Does my opponent just just lag out right when they get karate chopped there in the backfield? It sure looks like it. All right, wolf rats. The dreaded lag. My opponent has pulled the dreaded lag switch, guys. We're in we're in danger. All right. So Ikit's going to go in, and drop a huge cleansing rune right here. All right. Uh, let's wait and see how that goes. We'll get the ogres moving up to fight. Let's get the ogres moving into there. And in the backfield, what do we got? We got you guys, uh, and you got you. And now the ogres can move in there. And we can ninja this point too. All right, so we can get up there and there. All right, so Ikit Claw's here. We're going to go ahead and do this. And get the Funzing Rune of Doom. And now we need to start machine gunning this thing. And ogres are pursuing, yeah. We got them locked down there, locked down there. The Eshin Triads in the back are just absolute, absolute units. They, they've disrupted that Death Reaker, and that's just so big. All right, so we're going to move you back there to pin them in. All right, so one train is basically on Death's Bed, the Demon's Tongue, which is the one we really want to kill. So that's huge. And uh, we do see Astrogoth in there. Looks like there's one Hobo Goblin Rider being hunted. So let's dive here, keep these Rattling Gunners online. Um, you guys keep going after it. We need to try and kill it if we can. And you guys shoot here, pull Ikit Claw back, and now we need to call in more... Uh, Probably, probably just you can get some cheap slingers and some capture weight there just to get like some bodies up and move you guys back to the middle. All right. So those guys have chased them down. We got to make sure we don't get our character gooned. Um, so in response, let's grab you guys just as a bit of a sacrifice. And in the backfield, how's it looking? Uh, we do get the Blazing Beards of Basharic. So let's get them around the back. We need to keep that offline. And man, these trains are just getting last samurai. It's so hard right now. So incredibly hard. All right. So yeah, this is a big, huge blunder here. Letting my ogre characters take that kind of a beating is super shitty. Um, I don't even know how they took that damage, to be completely honest with you. All right. So I have you throw the little ninja stars right here. And the death runners can go finish off that death shrieker. And we still have that side objective, which is huge. All right. So we got that. Let's go after this. One train is down. We're up in value so far. Um, and yeah. Let's get you. Get you guys go here. You guys go here. Icket Claw just keeps rolling dirty on his doom wheel. That machine gun has just been brutal this game, like absolutely brutal. All right, let's move you guys up. Uh, Death Runners on top of the uh, the the Death Reek is probably going to finish it off. And now we just goon the characters. Yeah, see our all oh, the Rat Ogre packs getting it done, baby. They're getting it done. All right, let's do another Flensing Rune right here. That's going to be incredibly good. Chorf, the Chorf Cheese is struggling. We may have we may have stopped the Chorf Cheese for now. We may have done it. All right, so let's get some Clan Rats up to the point, just to make sure we're reinforced. 
And uh, that's going to be a big win for us. So now we go after the Skullcracker, if possible. Keep Ickit rolling dirty. The backfield ambushes have been pretty clutch, to be honest. Those things have been great. Yeah, now it looks like they're finally trying to move up, but I think we're okay there. All right, let's uh, get the Rattling Gunners to move in. Go after the train again. Let's go after the train here. Ickit Claw, keep going dirty. And um, no threats on this side whatsoever, which is good. We do see some, uh, some dudes coming in looking to maybe consolidate on that point, so shutting them down now would be good. And uh, yeah, let's go after this character. And you guys keep going. Ikit, keep rolling dirty. We see Bull Centaur Renders being called in. Um, let's do some unsummoning, do some housekeeping here. And we need to get those Rattling Gunners in position to take that thing down. Yeah, we need to kill the trains. The trains are the cheese. Without the trains, they don't really have any like chances, I don't think, against us with the way their army's built. All right, so yeah, let's get more rats coming up. And again, we might be able to get another big blob, blob punishment spell or something. Yep, nice play there. Able to isolate my uh, my poor Rattling Gunners. All right, how are we doing on Flensing Runes? It's on cooldown right now. Uh, we have some crowd clearing abilities. This point's looking okay. Let's keep nibbling here. So get that train if possible. Move these clan rats up. And Flensing Runes going to be uh, ready in a couple seconds. We're up on points pretty heavily. And it looks like it's mainly just laborers coming in. You know, you, when you invest so much in one unit type, you're potentially going to be in danger. Uh, the build the builds will not be super diverse. All right, so we need to run away here. There are some bull central renders over there now, so we need to pull back. All right, so you guys get back. You guys move in. Uh, chieftains do this. Let's get a funzing rune right there to punish. And now for the Collins in the back, you guys just take down those hobo goblins. And uh, let's go ahead and get yeah some Gisales wouldn't be bad. Can pick those guys off first and then switch them over. Skullcracker gets afflicted by the funzing rune of doom. And let's get you guys parked in the back here. And how are we looking there? All right, Wolfrat's doing the work of the gods. Oh my god, the Iron Demon has been resummoned. Are you kidding me? That's that's really really going hard into it. That's for sure. Blazing Beards of Sherrick. Let's hit him with a little bit of witchcraft. Um, we have enough for another Flensing Rune, which I think is. Oh, that was good. That actually ended up doing a lot of damage. All right, Bull Centaur Render is coming across, so we need to get the uh, other rats there and get them away. Ikit, keep moving, and Gisales, have they finished off their target? They have. All right, so these guys move up here. Gisales need to come up and try and finish this off if we can. So let's get that Skullcracker, and um, what do we have in the trees here? Those Hobo Goblins, Sneaky Gits. All right, let's see if we could maybe nin ninja them down. Uh, all right, so my Chieftains are starting to get a little bit smashed. This is where we could be in some danger. We could run out of steam a little bit. Flensing Rune is coming in the back pocket, so let's sit you guys back, sit you guys back. This character almost has this thing down. And we have the Gisales just about in position. We could start shooting at Bull Centaur Renders too. Wouldn't be a bad idea. Now we can go ninja nibble on those guys. All right. So the rats need to just like swarm the point. We have another Flensing Rune. Um, so let's get some of you guys coming up. Some ninja rats. Or skirmish. We got the poke here. Let's get them shooting. Bull Centaur Renders. You guys notice they're getting killed by the Gisales pretty effectively. We still have most of our goon squad. We might actually be able to kill Astrogoth here too. Um, yeah, I'm actually going to go for the kill on Astrogoth, which is not something you hear terribly often. All right, so Bull Centaur Renders keep hitting them. Side points looking pretty good for us. Uh, what Collins can we get there? We'll get some Wolf Rats like in the trees, unsummon you Route Ogres. Um, this point's looking a little bit dicey, but I think we can hold it. We're going after Astrogoth, and if we can get a Blob here, we can Flensing Rune him again. Oh, man, okay. I'm getting a little bit nervous now, not going to lie. Sweating bullets. Let's start shooting down one of the trains here. So let's go after that Iron Demon if possible. Hopefully we can defeat that Skullcracker. Um, is Astrogoth almost dead? He is. He's pretty low. That train's at 500 HP here. Let's pull you guys back a little bit. How are we looking over here? A little bit scary. Do we have any bodies we can just get there? Any any little guys? Yeah, and these guys get around the back. Let's engage. All right. Astrogoth is in the can. Okay, he's broken. And ironically, Ikit Claw is actually pretty good against him. Gisele's doing the work of the gods here. You can see that. All right, let's move that. Call some Death Runners. Oh, didn't the Vanguard points actually further, so that was a mistake, but it's all good. Let's pull back to the point. And um, we got it. Yeah, baby. Let's go, Horned Rat. We battled the cheese. <laughs> I knew that weird build would have some teeth because it's got a lot of anti-train potential. Ikit Claw with the dreaded 3,000 value. He was doing work. Also, the flank on the uh, the artillery piece was big. My opponent spent, you know, 1,200, and we were able to shut that down and tie, tie up a lot of their troops. Gisales did okay at the end. Rattling Gunners were MVPs for sure. They were great. All right. GG, well played. The Rattling Gunners in the beginning, like nuking the trains down to half health was really brutal. That was really brutal. 
All right, so let's refresh this. See if anybody else needs to drop or anything. Doesn't look like it. Turns out Giselles do have enough to, yeah, they do do work against the trains, um, but they, they can get shut down by Hobgoblin Riders if you're not careful, so. All right, Skaven. Hey, so I'm happy with that. You know, we've we've done okay. Skaven versus, uh, what was I playing against? The uh, Chaos Dwarfs? A lot of Chaos Dwarfs being played today. Yeah, the Mutant Rat Ogres are cool, man. They're they're fun. They're very fun units. Horned Rat approved, baby. All right, so looking at the tourney so far. Got a handful of matches still to be finished. Tubatai, Blood Penguin, um, Serkia and Martin here. Jeff, Bob, and Noctrum, Hadries, and Dustman. And yeah, quite a few games being played, which is fun. And let me make sure that that's working properly. So prepare for the bear. Should have gotten just the free win. So he's 0-3, even though that doesn't make sense. Okay, so I got to do a little bit of admin work right now. Got to do a little bit of that. So we have a chance of making top four. It's not amazing. A lot of it's going to depend on who we get for the next round, but... It's, it's the odds are, are low right now, but... Oh, the Rattling Gunners were on skirmish mode. Okay. Uh, Lizardmen are top tier because of Life Bloom and Sar Spam. And and yeah, it's it's really good. It's really, really good. Oh, Hound Units are some of the best units in the game. The Night, Night Runner, Triad, Covert Ops were super clutch. Yeah, the Covert Ops were good. As, because the thing is, when Chaos Dwarfs summon units to stop the Covert Ops, the units they then summon usually aren't that good against those units. So, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool indeed. Probably have a minute until some of these games wrap up here. Yeah, Lizardmen are crazy good. I, they're the one that probably didn't need to be banned today, but uh, I was basically just banning all the factions based on their win percentages. So I was trying to keep it fair. Well, Lizardmen just do this shit. Let me show you. I so when I played against Hadries, who's you know I would say a stronger player than I am, I was able to win the the tournament series um, with Lizardman against his Beastman, which is actually a pretty even matchup. But it's just this mouth breathing shit. So you basically just go with a life slam like every time. Okay, you go Lore of Life, and you they have super good abilities, and you just bring Awakening of the Wood and Earth Blood, right? Cut that. And every single time you cast a spell with life. With so every every single time I cast um, Awakening the Wood or Earth Blood or whatever, uh, it's going to trigger the Life Bloom passive, which then heals your entire army by one percent of its HP. And when you look at Lizard units, their Sars have ten thousand HP. Their mind dinosaurs have a ton of HP as well. So that let's say I have like you know five Sars on the battlefield, right? Every and I cast an Earth Blood to heal something. It doesn't matter what. So the Earth Blood itself is going to heal a shit ton of HP. And then here, I'm going to be getting 500 HP for free on these units, on your entire army. It's a really subtle effect that people don't notice, but it's disgustingly powerful when put over the... So, like, you'll often see a lot of lizard players do, like, some shit like this, right? And then, like, from here, the rest of the units they call in are, like, Croxagors, Feral Cold Ones. Um, it's incredibly tough to stop. And then you'll see, like, occasionally, maybe we cut this... You would see like a double ancient salamander play, which is really strong, especially since their skirmishing is so powerful in tandem with the uh, with the heals you can get from the earth blood. So it's really hard to like counter skirmish them. But that's just so crazy good. So like here in this case, if I cast an earth blood, I'm getting let's see, six hundred, probably like seven, eight hundred HP for free, which is just nuts. It's just nuts. Yeah. Then you can throw in a rev crystal, and so lizard armies have this most insane grinding potential. And on top of that, they play objective super well because they have some of the better infantry in the game. Yeah, Life Bloom needs to be nerfed. All those effects are just stupid powerful. You know what the most cost-effective way? I've been winning tournaments with uh, tournament games with Empires. I won a tournament with them last week. And you know what the bullshit is that I just switched to doing to win tournaments is guess what? I have builds not like this, but I just use a Jade Wizard. So like a lot of my builds will look like this. It's it's uh, Let's cut this. And it sucks because it's such a boring way to play, but it's often the most effective, right? So you'll see like builds like this coming out, like where it's like you have like a bare bones general of the empire, just like, you know, to get up there. Um, and you have a caster like this. You keep life bloom, power stone. You just do awakening the water and earth blood and you just heal your wagons. You throw in a couple great swords because they're actually pretty decent now. And then you just get like, uh, you know, whatever it can be like a, 
whatever the matchup calls for. But like shit like this is so strong. So these guys have 8,000 HP. So they're going to get 80 HP per. And the wagons are also getting healed. The great swords are getting a lot of HP. You just nerf the percentage. Yeah, you nerf the percentage. So currently, uh, life bloom, it heals for 0 0.20. If you brought it down to 0 0.15 or 0.10, it would be better. Or if you lessen the duration, because it's, it's just insanely good. It's insanely good. Pretty much every faction that has access to life bloom uh, is using it at the highest level. That it's just the other lords of magic are all dog shit compared to it, right? Because like getting, if I cast a life bloom here or an awakening of the wood, I'm getting. So these guys have eight. So 80, 160, 240, 320, 400, uh, five, six, and these guys are all going to get healed. So I'm getting like seven or eight hundred. HP value every single time I cast this cheap's bullshit spell across my entire army. Yeah. So it's just, it's way too strong. It's way too strong. Um, Tomb Kings also do it, but Tomb Kings, it's not so bad because, you know, they had the leadership nerfs and also their skeletons don't have expendable um, proper cap weight. So, yeah. So that is just stuff like that. Um, I don't, Wood Elves, I don't know if they do that. Wood Elves usually have more diverse magic selection for sure. Let me see my opponent here. Yeah, it's hard for sure. All right. So there's my rant about how OP that shit is. It's just, and over the course of an entire game, you're going to be netting like that several thousand value, actual damage value from uh, Life Bloom, like on your army. It's, it's really nuts. All right, one game finishing, and then we're going to be heading to the next round here. Life Bloom is OP for Wood Elves. I haven't experimented that much, but I would assume so. Like, why would you not just have Life Bloom? You know, it's like, it's so good. Yeah, and so many other lore passives are useless. You're right, Martin. Absolutely. Um, it's probably the most effective way to do Wood Elves. The double Melkoth is also meta. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, it's a shame because like I like using other lores of magic. They're way more fun. Hey, thanks for being a member for 32 months. Thank you, Sophie. Hope you're doing well. It's a long time. It's, a, it's over a year. Well, Life Bloom doesn't make like a faction OP per se, but it makes it exponentially more viable than it already is um nurgle can do it too but nurgle it makes sense for nurgle's play style because nurgle's supposed to be about healing they give up so much in ranged and 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 skirmishing utility that they should be able to get like a children of nurgle going right children of nurgle is basically the same thing as life bloom um this bad boy okay um nurgle should be like this but Lizardmen have crazy skirmish, crazy range. They can do like all of it while also basically healing as good, if not better than Nurgle. Um, how do you do corn versus lizards? Uh, it's hard, but doable. I would say it's lizard favored pretty, pretty heavily, but your key there is Valkia. So Valkia the bloody is just an absolute terminator. You just get her to hunt down the salamanders basically. And that's like your best bet. <laughs> Turn speaks some Polish. Jest, jak się masz? I don't know too much. I know a couple sentences. Um, Zotorovich. You know, all the goodies. Uh, the vampire passive is way weaker. It got nerfed. And that's why vampire counts are more balanced now. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's way, way better. The vampire count one is like one of the weakest ones, actually. But vampire counts have tons of healing from Invo and from Corpse Guards and Crypt Horrors. And they have a lot of units that naturally just heal anyways. So, Ah, uh, one game left to finish. One game to rule them all. One game to bind them. I'd be very happy if we managed to win this last one. You know, going technically three and one with Skaven would be good. Although it'd be two and one really since we got a buy round. But um, yeah, our tiebreakers aren't great because one of our opponents did drop out of the tournament, which is going to wreck our tiebreaker since they're not playing. Um, so that probably diminishes our chances. But if we win this next one and we get it against some, like a player with a strong tiebreaker of their own, maybe, maybe, maybe we can do a little something, something. But yeah, we'll see. Jindobra, yes. Yeah, Nur well, I would be hesitant to buff Nurgle because Nurgle's actually not bad. I like I played Nurgle in two single faction tournaments like a month ago, and I went to the top four both times. I had like four and oh, three and one. Nurgle is really good if you actually practice them. Um, and the thing is, like their play style, if it's like OP, is really oppressive. Like that HP healing, all that stuff is uh, is rough. Yeah, so you got to be careful buffing factions like Nurgle and Vampire Counts. Oh, uh, yeah. That's the good stuff right there, baby. All right, so refreshing, seeing how we're looking. The old rats are trying. 
Oh my god, the game's still going. Let's see. I wonder, they must be having some colossal duel of fates. It's been a pretty quick tournament so far, though. We've had we've had the players finishing their rounds fast, which I like to see. Yeah, Nurgle's cool. Nurgle's definitely fun. How much stronger would Slanesh be if they had healing? Oh, they'd be disgusting. Because Slanesh has the best heavy infantry in the game, ironically. Like, if you look at the... Like, most Chaos Warriors are overpriced, but the Slanesh ones are just, like, the unholy Dark Gods. Like, Chaos Warriors of Slanesh are freakishly good. 9,000 HP. They basically have the melee defense of a Chosen unit for 900 gold. They have Poison. Um, they have Expert Charge Defense against everything. Yeah, so they have Charge Defense against any attacker. They're ITP. They have Charge Reflection also. So when bracing, this unit deals additional damage when attacking charging enemies. Um, they're just so good. They're so good. And Fizrez... Like, they're hands down one of the best uh, infantry units in the game. Which is weird, because Slanesh like, should be known for its, like, demons and mobility. But typically, it's just, like, this stuff. Speaking of, I'm going to play Slanesh in the next SFT, man. They're really good, and they're fun to play, too. Slanesh is a solid, solid faction. Are Whip Warriors better than Sword and Board? All day, every day. All day, every day. The Sword and Board Warriors are massively inferior. So look at the stat difference. You have way more melee attack. The melee defense advantage on the Chaos Warrior is pretty much negligible because of the poison. And also the um, the whip variant has um, has the charge reflection thing and expert charge defense. Whereas this guy doesn't have any of that. And it's all for 50 gold more. It's crazy. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. They're so good. They're so incredibly good. Okay, how are we looking here? Slanesh really is, they're good, dude. I'm telling you, Slanesh is, well, their win rate's 50% right now. That's great. 50% is, is a solid faction, dude. I mean, if you see Slanesh, look at them. They're here and they have good matchups versus a lot of strong factions. They're 5-0 and against Dwarves, dude. They're 2-0 and against Grand Cathay. 4-1 and against Zinj. They're beating the Empire. Like, they're looking good, dude. They're looking really good. Um... These are the factions. Warriors of Chaos, I don't think belong. I, I think if more people played them, but yeah, there's... Corn probably needs some milk. Chaos Demons are weird. I think in the hands of really high level players they can be good, but they're incredibly hard to play. Vampire counts, I don't think also I don't think they belong down there, but. Yeah. Alright. So what do we got? Are they done with the round yet? Let's check the dreaded tournament and see. It's almost time. And I hope you've all been doing well. Thank you for joining today. Hey, the mightiest pen. Sorry, I missed your donation. Thanks for the years of entertainment. Hope to see you at an old world tournament. Hey, well, yeah, absolutely. You'll probably be seeing me. All right, so let's advance the Swiss. We're in the next and final round of regular regulation. And we have, oh God, I'm playing the Empire. Oh no. The Empire definitely gives us Gaven the Dirty in my experience. Although if you use Power Grab, it's more winnable. Um, all right, so we have Blood Penguin. He's a very good player. But like, have fun. We're probably gonna get grenade launched into the Shadow Realm here, but we're gonna we're gonna have some fun doing it, I can assure you. Alright, so the map is going to be the Arachnarok Lair, which is not good for us, I don't think. Arachnarok Lair. There we are. And switching on over to the old rats once again. Escaping. Yes, yes. Vampire Concept, such a boring play style. Yeah, they are, it's kind of fun to play at times, though. They have some cool flavor. Skaven, I wouldn't say Skaven are bad. They're just like lower lower tier. They're like a C tier faction. Empire is like a B, B tier faction. Yeah. No, maybe like low A for Empire, I would say. Like B, B plus. Empire is like a B plus faction. Skaven are probably a C faction right now. All right, so let's see what we got here. Line of sight's a big problem on this map. They added some bushes to it, so it's it's a little bit scary. Um, yeah, wagons are a thing that we got to put some respect on. Catapults are always fun. You know, having big old catapult action. The Empire loves that. And, all right. Three, four, five. All right, and then we get you guys. The Vermintide cometh. The Vermintide cometh indeed. Okay, so for our Lord, which Lord do we want to use against the Empire? So many fun choices. Let's uh let's continue experimenting and use somebody who's a little bit like off meta here. Um yeah, that's fine. And uh for our caster, 
against the Empire. Plague is cool, but honestly, I think just like Warp Lightning and those type of effects are the way. Bring the Tretch. Bring the most craven of tails. Oh, God. I don't want to lose. Like, just give my opponent the win. I, I want them to get some valuable practice from us here, you know? Because if we just bring some shit like Tretch, like, my opponent isn't going to... It's, like, not fun... When somebody memes too hard, I think it takes some of the fun out of the game for like the person who's being memed against, unless it's like kind of both players doing it. Yeah, I don't know. That's just my opinions. But anyways, uh, let's get you. We will get the this, Pest of Breath. And do we want to get that? That's kind of an interesting idea. I don't think so though. All right, so he's a little bit expensive, isn't he? What does that even do? All right, looking good to me. Bring the, the dreaded Storm Vermin hordes? We could. We could indeed. Fear the Storm Vermin, dude. All right. So that's a decent little starting army. The Pebbles of Doom are coming. Don't know how good this stinky rat is. What about like a Queek Headtaker game? Like Queek on the objectives? I don't know. It feels kind of like he wouldn't be able to kill things quick enough. Definitely feels a little bit bad. Skrolka is very vulnerable to being gooned, so you got to watch out for him. And um, then in reserves, we want you guys. And um, that looks good. I don't know about Globideers against these bad boys. Globideers against Empire is not bad for like grinding against their mass state troopers, but most Empire players are gonna find a way to shut those down. It would be really funny if we got a Sunmaker. That would be hilarious. Just like a fat Sunmaker making it rain on me, dude. Queek, Queek, uh, nah, I mean, Empire doesn't really go with foot characters, so Queek is kind of haggard. You could go Deathmaster. Deathmaster is someone that can do some work and be pretty obnoxious. Um, he can snare things down. Yeah, I don't know, though. It's so haggard. Oh, it's so haggard, dude. All right. So we'll get you, and then in reserves, we can get another one of these. Although line of sight on this map is really troublesome. It's very, very troublesome. That looks good. And then in reserves, we can call out some of the you guys. Warp grinders feel interesting. Oh, that's actually a fun idea. Let's try that out a little bit. Got to worry about those like Empire Heavy Cavalry just running rampant all over your shit, though. It's like they can just go absolutely bananas if you're not careful. That's why you need to max out on Rat Ogres. If you don't have max Rat Ogres, the Empire is going to cackle at you. Um, Not bad. Maybe one of those guys. Yeah, it's kind of cute. All right, let's try that out. Cheese for the cheese throne. If we win this, I'll be very happy. Blood Penguin's a top tier player and Empire is um, a good faction too. So I would be very happy. Um, all right, what are we missing here? I feel like something really important is missing. Yeah, something something extra, extra spicy. Any spells we wanna bring? Can lower that down. Then in reserves, we got three of those. Wouldn't be bad either. Hmm. Yeah, that's okay. Is this the time where Doom Wheel, the Doom Wheel meta arrives? That would be pretty cool. The old Doom Wheels just going ham. All right. So in the backfield, looking fine. Let's throw in one of these. All right, screw it, man. Let's go. The horn rat, it's getting in there, baby. Hmm. You know what? They should just give Throt anti-large. Like, Throt should just have anti-large base. It shouldn't be an activated ability. That would make him a lot better. As like, a, like an assassin, kind of like, you know, fighter character. He's just kind of janky right now. All right, so we have a, a bit of an off meta build, some elements of meta, obviously no power grab. Um, we're gonna see what sort of witchcraft we can get done here. All right, have the Doom Wheels ever been good? Ikit Claw's Doom Wheel isn't bad. If you bring Ikit Claw to Doom Wheel, it can, be, it can be kind of menacing. Yeah, it can be kind of menacing. All right, so here comes the rats. We're going to make some rules here, guys. The the rats, the big rat's going to make all the rules. Thank you guys for joining. The old Total War engine still going strong, despite all the haggard CA stuff. We're still we're still having fun here. Yeah, so they added trees to this map, which makes it much harder for our, um, our dudes to get in there and do work. 
be a mad rat trip a warp lightning cannon i do have a warp lightning cannon in reserve but not in the main army so we want to fight in the middle that's i wonder if a sunmaker are we going to see a sunmaker out of uh out of my opponent here that would be pretty crazy it's it's okay against gaiman it definitely is especially on a small map like this yeah maybe maybe Throt does not have anti-large when he's on his mount. Um, when he's on foot, he does. But when you put him on his mount, he for some reason loses it, which is weird. Uh, Theron, you hit the gym. Not so much anymore. My tendon problems that I have from this stupid autoimmune disease kind of keep me from doing it. But I used to be a huge gym brat, absolutely, when I was younger. Uh, yeah, Throt should just keep that. I don't know why they took it away. I do not know why. We brought a very cool lord, though. You guys are going to like it. He's, he's a cool one. He's very fun. Very, very fun. Yeah, see, they added forest to this map, which made it a better map, in my opinion. Um, but it, it does hurt our gun line. Like, it's much harder to shoot on those side points. Much harder. The middle, definitely, you can shoot over, so. Yes, yes, Skaven. Go, my pretties. My opponent's finally loading. All right. So we, we brought Deathmaster because, you know, we don't get to see him often. And he's such a super cool character. All right, so let's get you, get you, get you here. The brave Skaven frontline of the gods. And the Night Runners are awesome because they're pretty good fighters, actually. And we'll get some spears back here. The Night Runners need to deal with like the grenade launchers and all that sort of good stuff. So, all right, and then you guys can push up on this point here. The big man's gonna be in group two here. We have the Rattling Gunners who are going to be chilling out. I'm just kind of vanguarding on the side. We'll get the Plague Monk, the big Stinky to go down with that group here. Now we need Ogres and Ogres. Yes, yes. All right. Cool, man. I think we're good to go. It's a pretty wide Skaven build. Yeah. We got old Deathmaster. I feel like Blood Penguin's going to give us the business here. It's going to be rough. <laughs> But, you know, if I'm going to go out one way, it's losing to Sigmar. That should be it. You know, Sigmar, Sigmar deserves. Deathmaster's okay against Empire. He's very squishy, but his snares can be, you know, decent plays. Oh, okay, a toddy build. That's cool. All right, so let's uh, move you guys up to creep a little bit. And we have Toddbringer and a Steam Tank. Oh, okay. Steam Tanks are actually a bit of a thing. Yeah, they're not, they're not the worst against the Skaven. Maybe there's some Forbidden Empire tech I'm not aware of. Um, Deathmaster can definitely do some work against the Steam Tank. I'll call it a Warp Lightning Cannon. Rattling Gunners need to just be back defending. Um, and the rest of the build is going to be... Yeah, yeah. It's a it's like a Terror Route build. It's just a ton of really scary shit. And the Skaven just usually fold up when that happens. So, Alright, so let's move up to the middle. And then the first thing we're going to call out is going to be a Warp Lightning Cannon. Because that would just be the play. Toddy's going to get this. Let's call the Deathmaster in there for some snares. We've got you here. And we are being shot by what appears to be Huntsman. So, yeah, we'll start working on old Toddy here. He's going to terror out us, but it is what it is. All right. So let's call you in. Do this. Get the Warp Lightning Cannon up and get it to start shooting at the Stank. And Toddy did a little bit of damage, but... Oh, he must have some, like, Death Jacks or some shit back there. I'm not sure what that would be. All right. Let's uh do just like that. All right. So that's perfect. Rattling Gunners are going to stay behind the hill and defend the Warp Lightning Cannon, which is just going to sit on the stank the entire game, basically. Huntsman. All right, that's kind of cool. And our caster needs to head up here because the low ground isn't even going to be contested by the Empire. Um, ambushes here. Let's go ahead and just like have some rats like watching for um, like ambushes there from like stealth units. And yeah, you can see our little Night Runners can counter skirmish there very, very well. So, All right, let's do this, do this, and dodge that if possible. We should dodge it with one, at least. The Rattling Gunners are just going to hang back as a defensive piece. And we'll get one Rat Ogre unit back here, too. Uh, Warp Lightning Cannon doing good work so far. And now we're up on the point, but we're just going to kind of skirmish a little bit. Those are... Ooh, Silver Bullets. Okay, so we need to go after them with that, if possible. And you guys do this, and you go ahead and do that, and we'll start working down those units there. And outstanding. All right, so Flagellants are also a pretty choice target for us to shoot at. So let's get you on the Warp Lightning Cannon here. And the Warp Lightning Cannon can start just teeing off on these units here. So we're going to value trade a little bit. We're going to yield the objectives to Sigmar initially. And uh, then we're going we're gonna to try and just value trade to the best of our abilities. All right, so let's get you rats up. Pull you back. The Steam Tank is on the run. Um, Warp Lightning Cannon can switch on to Toddy for now. 
and Deathmaster can be ready to party. So if he comes back here, we do have the old Rattling Gunners. So we're going to kind of pull them in as a bit of a suppression piece right now. Like this. Get you guys moving out that way. And yeah, we should have the Warp Lightning Cannons doing its thing soon. All right. So the Steam Tank is still just dodging, which is fine. Um, shooting at Sigmar Suns. It's a good, good choice, I think. Yes, yes. And let's get you guys moving up. Some proper fighting power. You rats, let's pull back. Get you guys to go fight here. And the Rattling Gunners can start shooting at Sigmar Suns because that's fine. Um, you guys fight here. And you guys throw pebbles at the Flagellants. All right. So Toddy's getting poked a little bit. Um, Steam Tank is still just hanging back, which we're not too worried about. Let's go ahead and switch onto it. My opponent's gotten a little bit more relaxed with the micro ring there. Throw at the Silver Bullets are still not quite where we want. Deathmaster is going to help out there. And the Rattling Gunners are uh, getting shot by something. So we need to get them back if we can. No real artillery from my opponent. Mainly just calling in troopers and stuff. I feel like we're out trading pretty effectively here. All right. So you guys go there. Night Runners throw into these guys. Deathmaster is still just creeping about. World of Weeping Blades actually isn't bad. We can um, get Deathmaster in there with that and probably do some big damage, as a matter of fact. All right, so the tank is just still running, so we're going to start shooting at Toddy again, and we're going to get the Rattling Gunners going after Toddy as well. On the side, let's get some Plague Monks coming down here, getting ready to party, and we're going to do this. Cool, cool. Oh, that's a big burning head. That's a big burning head. Oh, that could be bad. All right, World of Weeping Blades. Let's do it. That's going to do, hopefully, some big damage, and we did dodge it with one unit. Rattling Gunners need to get back. Can't afford to lose them, and um, then let's call in some Wolf Rats here. And get them around the back. Okay. So we did take down those flagellants pretty hard. Burning head was pretty hot. Um, you guys have now retreated back. Let's get you on the spears. And the rattling gunners need to shoot at Toddy. Ogres need to screen to make sure he doesn't get too crazy. And cool. So you guys move up. Let's get some more magic going. I'm a little bit relaxed on that for sure. Um, we'll do that right down those flagellants. Outstanding. The little rat did some nice work. And now we're going to get a little bit of ninja pressure on this side point here. Let's do this. And um, what else can I call in? Not a whole lot. I'm going to keep those Gaven Slaves there just to kind of keep it honest. And the Ninja Rats are doing it. We have the Deathmaster in the bushes. Let's do some unsummoning and some unsummoning. The rats have gotten onto their prey. That's for sure. Warp Lightning Cannon is the tank back online. It kind of is. Silver Bullets are back in the bushes here. So let's get you guys moving up to go after them. Get the Ninja Stars going after Silver Bullets. And good. That's looking solid. All right. So old Plague Monks, let's get over there with our Assassin character. And um, we can move you up. Sending some Triads on the side point might not be bad, because Toddy wouldn't be able to deal with them super effectively. But I think an Ogre will probably get the job done. All right, so you guys are back. Let's run, and let's run you up here. Another Burning Head's going to melt some of my rats. Unfortunately, not much I can do about that. Just going to have to pay the price. Let's get you back up there, buddy. You guys chilling on that point there. We are up in value, but the Empire's playing the objectives very, very well. Um, we'll rear charge those swordsmen, and uh, now we got ogres coming in too. Anything else we can sneak through the seam here? Yeah, maybe. All right, so let's get you guys up. Get on those huntsmen here. I'm surprised we're not seeing more um, like heavy cavalry. <laughs> right as I say that, some knights of the blazing sun come out. Yeah, like where's all the heavy cav here? All right, let's get these ogres down. Rattling gunners are mowing them down. We got some good nibbles going on over here. You guys do that. Swordsmen are broken. Toddy needs to get hit there. Warp Lightning Cannon can shoot Silver Bullets. Let's shoot Silver Bullets here too, although they're kind of out of range. So that's not going to work. And here, you guys should start bashing on those spears. You guys shoot here, and you guys go here. All right, so the side point's looking like it could be ours. And um, overall, yeah, we have these. Let's go, actually, they can get on the point, And we can then summon in some brave rats of the Skaven Under Empire to do a little bit of chasing here. Let's shoot the Knights of the Blazing Sun. Which I always am a little bit hesitant about. I think Knights of the Blazing Sun are a little bit too expensive um, for this matchup, but we'll see if you know something something funny happens there. All right, Rattling Gun Defenders in the backfield seem to be doing well. Um, we get big pressure in the middle, and as far as call-ins go, let's go ahead and call in the Triads and send them up this way. And you guys can jump on these spears here. All right, so we do manage to get the side point. Never sent these guys after Silver Bullets. A little bit of Bronze Odie on my my part. Um, you guys can just attack these Slingers. Do some unsummoning on the rats, and we need to unsummon. Make sure the catapults are shooting good targets perpetually. That's very important. And just keep those Knights of the Blazing Sun getting pounded. We do lose this objective, but it looks like we're going to get the middle. Um, we do have a lot of cap weight there, a lot of momentum. And the Rattling Gunners are just doing such a good job. They're such an excellent um, backfield sweeper unit. You know, they're so good at that. All right, let's throw pebbles. You guys go in here. And um, do we have another breath attack? We do. 
So let's get him like that. It should hit those guns pretty effectively. Yes, it does. Nice HP. And uh, let's do a little unsummoning here. With Skaven, you got to be very on point with unsummoning, which I'm not always the best at, but uh, otherwise you can straight up just run out of stuff and you can feel pretty bad about yourself. All right, let's do this and this. All right, move up, move you guys up. And we do manage to wrestle the middle, which is looking good. We're playing cannon. Let's keep going after these brave Empire Knights. And the Stank is now in action, so we can start shooting the Stank here. And the Rattling Guns need to move up and go after uh, Toddy, because without if Toddy's just rampaging, then we're in trouble. Um, we do have Deathmaster nearby. Let's get the Ogres here and uh, the Ogre Seers and get these guys to intercept here. Toddy's taking quite a bit of damage. Can we use the Sigil? I think it's only... Oh, can we use it on these guys? No, no, it doesn't look like it's going to work. So get you on the tank, you on the tank, you guys up here on the side objective. We want to start pushing that again. So let's get some just cheap capture weight there if we can. And now the tank's taking a little bit of work. Empire Knights might be headed off here. We'll see what we can do. Get you guys moving this way. You guys just straight up chill here. Plague Monks can move back to the point as well. And um, yeah, the tank does end up getting beat up a little bit. We need some rats here to help us though, or else Toddy's just going to rampage. Could go after Toddy here, or Plightning Cannon. I think it's better to go after the Empire Knights at this point. So these knights are going to be dragged down. How are they confident? Jeez, they're like getting wrecked by quite a bit of stuff. All right, so let's get these Rattling Gunners up if we can. Um, we need to get the rats going here. Let's do Whirl of Weeping Blades. Get you up and you up. Uh-oh, this could be a problem. We could we could get the game flipped on our head right here for sure. As these guys need to move. You guys come back into the middle. And did we get the summon off? Man, our character keeps getting knocked over. That's not good. All right, so we're going to do Deathmaster Sigil on Toddy. We need to get that rat summon down. We need to get it. I've been trying to get it perpetually, but it just keeps getting canceled because of the knockdown. Ah, Empire Knights once again able to get us and punish us there a little bit. And uh, anything here we want to call in? Yeah, so we got some hounds, and then we can get some sneaky sneakies there. Let's get Kellen Vulcan and get you guys moving up. Do this, do this, and how are we looking in the middle? Yeah, not good. Toddy might be able to carry this game. He might be able to. All right, so you guys do that, and you guys go here. The triads go here. Or Plighting Cannon Crew needs to get back online. And uh, he's catching up in value, which is not good. It's not good at all. All right. Nibble there. We still have our Lord. Our caster is on the run, but it might actually rally. We'll have to see. Map's pretty dark. It's a little bit hard to see what's going on, but we're going to try our best. Let's get some pebbles going here. And the score is pretty close. These, these doggies need to run. I don't know if they're going to be able to get away, but we'll try. And then move up to the mid. Um, you guys can rotate to the mid as well, so let's do this. Yes, yes. You guys keep going. Catapult. Uh, do we have any play called catapult ammo? We do. So let's get it on the silver bullets. And unfortunately, I didn't see this. So that's going to be the end of that cannon right there, which means he might even get the other one. Come on. Give us the points. Give us the points, precious. All right. So Empire Knights, Empire Knights. And um, for now, let's get these doggos. Call them in. Have them take down those Empire Knights. You guys chill back because Toddy's just going to be rampaging all over that place. Yeah, he's just going to be giving us the dirty. And we do have some slingers, which is good. All right. Is there any way we're going to be able to rally anything on the low ground? I don't know. It's going to be very tough. That steam tank down there is giving us a lot of trouble. It's giving us a hell of a lot of trouble. We don't really have any ogres anywhere useful. We have some in the backfield. Jeez. Yeah, that's, that's like way, way off here. All right. Vulcan Tail Slashers, you guys go fight here. Let's roll to the low ground. See if we can maybe take that tank down with a Death Master. That would be nice. It's probably not likely that we get that, but we'll see what we can do. All right. So we've secured that. We have our Warp Lightning Cannon back, which is very cute. Toddy is still very much alive and well. He's he's just absolutely relaxing right now. And um, we get some Ogres down here to the point. We're up in value, but it doesn't feel like it too much anymore. You know, it kind of feels like one of those dicey situations. Let's get those Knights of the Blazing Sun and um, Deathmaster. Hopefully he can get that tank back. Let's roll to the middle with all these guys. Roll to the middle with you. And maybe those Wolf Rats will do it if my opponent doesn't notice. And it looks like he did not notice. That's That's really good for us. So now we can start shooting at Toddy again. Pebbling you guys down. And um, a couple ogres came back from route here. Let's get you back here and here. We're rotating up to the middle. And Deathmaster might be able to sunder the armor of that thing and get it a little bit lower. He might be able to. Looks like the wolf rat's doing the work of the gods. Um, any more cav to be called in? Not quite. All right, so let's do this. And did our caster come back? He is just randomly routing on the edge of the map. Okay, classic. Classic Skaven. You look and they're routing. Um, all right, you guys and you guys. Let's get some more rat bodies up to the middle. The Empire Knight's being dragged down. We got a lot of state troopers coming. And Deathmaster is doing a good job against that tank. He's actually killing it. So 
That's pretty big. All right, move you guys there. Now we can move you guys up to the point here. Get you guys heading to the point also. Warp Lightning Cannon. So let's focus down those Empire Cav if possible. And now did we finish them? Those Knights of the Blazing Sun. Not going quietly. That's for damn sure. Not going quietly at all. All right. Let's get some nibbles. Let's do this. Do this. Nibble these guys down. Park up on the point. Deathmaster is still doing work. Oh, nice burning head right there. That was really good. That was a super clutch one. Might be able to wrestle this side point back though. We might be able to. We do have the good cap weight there. Probably should have sent the hounds over there. All right, so we'll send those two hounds over now to try and get the side. Deathmaster's almost got this tank down, but he's not quite able to get the shank off. All right, so let's just run away now. No sense in dying over there. Um, Warp Lightning Cannon. Let's see if it can finish off the tank from downtown. It might be possible. Come on, Deathmaster. Finish it. You know, you're the chosen one. Chosen one! All right, so let's park at the point. Should have a good cap weight there. And uh, we can go ahead and call in some more Route Ogres to the middle. Let's get you guys up. And you guys, Deathmaster is trying to finish off that stank, but he's actually not been able to hit it once, which is very bad. So we're going to just peace out here. Warp Lightning Cannon is up. And um, we do manage to get the side point, which is great. All right. So mo mainly just Rad Ogres here and kind of crappy units. So let's just abandon this, rotate to the middle. And see if we can get that. Um, it's He might be winning with this current situation. I'm not sure. We'll see. But we do have that point. That's looking good. Deathmaster and company are here. So let's get you guys to go. And Deathmaster can chase this down. We're plighting cannons out of ammo. Um, big call-ins in the back. Let's get some play call catapults. Always good leadership discouraging stuff in the late game. So we're going to shoot into the Sigmar Suns here. And you guys can move up onto the point. Let's move you up onto the point. And the steam tank is at 800 HP. It might go down here. Very well could. Oh, caster's back. Nice. I didn't notice that for a while. That was a little bit terrible that I didn't see that. All right. So the middle point's going to us. I think it will. Um, the tank is very, very low. We got the doggies. And currently, as it stands... Ooh, it's going to be tough. I think he does just barely win on the one. So we need to flip this. But you can see our leadership's very fickle. The, the Skaven are not the most resilient folk. That's for sure. All right. If I can get that tank down. Okay, tank's down. That's That's great. Pretty fun using like a Deathmaster type character, isn't it? It's so different. And um, what do we have here? Yeah, still still quite a bit. I think we could get some like basic clan rats. I think he's ba basically pulled the game back. Toddy is really good against Gaven, um, as you can see. He's he's an absolute linebacker. Let's move in. And um, let's start ninja starring here. Get these ogres back this way. And we can do this. And we can try and assassinate Toddy here, actually. That would, that would be pretty good. So we're going to try our best, see if we can get them. But there's a lot of Empire Troopers coming in, heavy cav and shit. So we don't have too many good answers there. But maybe Deathmaster can pull a miracle out of the bag. Toddy's wavering right now. Um, let's get some rats summoned here. And there's a burning head going down also. Toddy does escape. Is he broken? No, he's just shaking. Okay, so World of Weeping Blades. Go here, go here, go here. You guys go up here. Yeah, I think he's got it, just barely. This is a really good match. The Empire Heavy Cab were very hard to deal with. And it looks like we're going to lose the side point now, too. Send some triads over there. Maybe we can stabilize it. Probably not. Um, you guys come down here. In the meantime, keep grinding in the middle. World of Weeping Blades did a little bit of damage, as the French would say, but not too much. All right. So, yeah, keep grinding. You guys come to the middle objective here. And uh, maybe the triads get there and keep that point. Maybe, maybe. The back point does get taken down. We have some Skaven Slave Spears, which we can call in, and they'll be able to probably fight off these swordsmen. As long as the catapult keeps shooting, we're happy. All right, doggos, get in. Keep mulching. Flagellants do their thing. Deathmaster, probably not the most optimal here, but he did get 2,600 value. Look at that. That's, that's pretty cool, right? Old Deathmaster. So off meta Skaven, putting up a fight against a top tier player. I honestly felt like with cleaner play on either side, this game could have gone either way. So I'm very happy with that. All right. So uh, basically it's GG. Yeah, that's it. But Deathmaster, not bad, guys. He got 2,600 value, and he only costs like 11 or 12 or something. Pretty great. Mm. The Steam Tank was cool. I like that on that map. It was like an interesting tech. Only 900 value, though, so that certainly didn't win in the game. Um, play Claw Catapults were good. Maybe more Warp Lightnings, too. Like, look at this value. Uh, maybe if we had another Warp Lightning just nuking the cavalry, that could have like softened him up a bit. Because, yeah, that was that was uh, really good, that Warp Lightning Cannon. GG, well played. GG, well played. Fun one. Uh, report score, and good luck, have fun. All right. So, cool Skaven games today. We got to try some interesting stuff. Uh, he did good. Our caster play was really suboptimal. I think that probably cost us a bit. 
I think if we had cleaner caster play, we could have had a better performance. Rattling Gunners were good as like a deterrent unit. But honestly, this like Blood Penguin's one of the best Empire players out there. And the fact that it was a close game means that I think Skaven... Uh, no, this isn't a Skaven favored matchup in my opinion. No. With Power Grab, maybe it is. But I've, I probably have like an 80% win rate as Empire in this matchup. I, I've like grenade... He didn't even use grenade launchers, dude. Grenade launchers are like the absolute scourge of Skaven too. They just punish you off objectives. Like this is, I think this matchup's Empire favored, but again, maybe with Power Grab it's different, but Power Grab is, again, it's a temporary thing. So, um, all right. Council Guard? Uh, no, he'd probably just, he'd probably just punish them. Maybe a Council Guard pick could have been okay, but grenade launchers would tear him apart very well. He had very good cap control. It was very clean, very clean cap play. All right. So let's see what the top four is going to look like today. Uh, refreshing. And, uh, yeah, Toddy can just run away from Council Guard. Giselles could be good. They're hard to protect, though. They're hard to protect with all the heavy cab running around. All right, so what's it going to be? Uh, a couple matches going. Currently looking at the top of the leaderboard for today's tournament. We got Ghoul Baby, Platypus with, on Demons of Chaos. I believe he's still playing a game, though. Let's see. No, Platypus did lose a game on Doc. But he's still in top four because he's got a good tiebreaker. Subutai and Blood Penguin, most likely, but there's still, I think, one or two games to go. Oh no, Subutai is still playing with Serkia. So that that's gonna be whoever wins that is guaranteed. And then it's gonna be a tiebreaker between these two. Okay. So probably another five minutes till we start the top four. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. The 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 ruin could be good too. Yeah, like what would be good against Empire though? I, that matchup is always really fun. It's like the cab micro is so decisive. And he has like Toddy and uh, had really, really good cab control with that. Gracier would probably just get blasted, but a Gracier could give you decent fighting power, but Toddy will probably bully it. So I don't think that's good. Yeah, Skaven are super fun, dude. They have so many cool tools. So it's, it's, it's not my play style, really. A little bit too low leadership for me, but they're uh, they're they're fun. They're fun. Yeah, I usually like to play Chaos. Empire's not the best leadership either, but the State Troopers, they hold better. They have 60 base uh, leadership, whereas Glen Rats are like low 50s. The Empire endures always, dude. Always, yeah. I'm, I'm happy they did. All right, so let's get this going and get a lobby set up. Turn top four. Uh, Carl Franz is really bad, unfortunately. He's he, he just, his abilities aren't good and he's too squishy. Whereas Toddbringer has like a leadership discouraging effect and passive healing, which is like so powerful. Um, like Franz would have died that game, but Toddy on the other hand, uh, he, he, he heals himself. So he's able to cackle all the way to the bank. All right, let's get it. Uh, I often wonder about Skaven monsters in that matchup, like using like a double mutant rat ogre with like Throt to just wreck the Empire Heavy Cavalry. There's some interesting techs that Skaven haven't explored there, I think. Okay, one last player to be played. Um, it looks like the top four is going to be some fun matchups today. Now that we have like the bullshit factions kind of banned out, we have we actually have some cool stuff. So we have uh, Supertized Grand Cuthé. We have a Demons of Chaos player. We have an Empire, and uh, I don't know what Ghoul is playing. This is going to be really fun, though. This this could affect it, this last matchup. Dustman and Jeff Bob. Um, let me see what their records look like. Yeah, I, I don't want to go because it could affect the tiebreaker. So we need to wait for them to finish. Because they may have played one of the people in the top four and affect their tiebreaker. So is Volkmar any good? He's okay. He's he's better in land battle. And Dommy's not very good. Toddy, it's usually Toddy or like a cheap character. Sometimes Marcus if you want to do like net cheese, but Toddy is like the go-to. He's very good. The terror routes that he causes are brutal. They're really brutal. Haven't seen the mustache since Warhammer 2. Yeah, the mustache, he, he does his thing, dude. He does his thing. Um, let's get this. Yes. And let me check the map for the top four. We'll be casting one side of the top four. Glade of the Everqueen. Nice map. Glade of the Everqueen. Here we go. What's about the lore behind Mother Ostanka's orc teeth? I have no idea. That's a good question. I mean, the, I, I mean, theoretically, it's like she's kind of more one with wild nature. So the teeth aren't like orc teeth. They're more animalistic. But yeah, I, I don't understand why they gave her those teeth. I suppose I couldn't explain it outside of that. 
fast tournament today. Good job, everyone. This has been good. We've been going just over two hours and we're already through regulation rounds. It's just smooth as hell. This is going good. Total War tournaments are usually just a, just chaos and anarchy. So this is this is good. All right, so our top four is the exact same as it was before. Um, so let's go ahead and advance the top four here. And we're gonna cast one of these games. All right, so heading there, finalize that tournament. And then we move on to the next one. All right, so top four is upon us. And we have the top four here. Okay, so Subutai versus Blood Penguin. Ooh, I want to watch that. I want to see if the Empire can beat the uh, beat the Grand Cathay. That'll be a fun matchup. I feel like that's heavily Cathay favored, but I would love to learn something about this. So I'm going to watch Subutai versus Blood Penguin and Platy versus Ghoul Baby. Look, have fun casting Subutai game. All right, so we're in the top four. Let's invite those bad boys to the lobby. There we are. So there's Blood Penguin and Subatai. Cool, so they both should be on the way here in a second. What units, Lords, do you want for Thrones of Decay? I think Tamarcon would be the coolest. Like a giant Toad Beast monster? Dude, that would be so rad, come on. All right, so Plague Penguin is here, and it is going to be Empire versus... Um, would I have been able to make top four even if I won that last game? Let's see. I'm going to go back and check real quick. I don't think so. I think because my opponent dropped, it killed my tiebreaker. Um, no, no, no chances. When your opponent drops, it kind of screws up your tiebreaker, so you pretty much have to go 4-0 at that point if that happens to you. All right. So Subutai is on the way. Empire versus Grand Cathay is the matchup. And it's time. Toad Dragon, yeah. Toad Dragons would be really cool. Yeah, you're, you're going to get like Toad Dragons and Pestigors and all that kind of stuff probably. Pestigors is like... Creative Assembly is just going to take the easy route there because all the gore units are basically just reskins and they can just like have them be a DLC unit. So you'll get like Pestigors and Zangors and you know, all that sort of good stuff. So this matchup should be Cathay favored. Like it should be, um, but I'm maybe Empire can win with like Sunmaker. Like you go Sunmaker and you bring like triple Pistolier and then you use like Nets to shut down the Crowmen trying to dive your backfield. Maybe, maybe something like that, but it feels very hard. Great swords are good here too, if they can avoid the firepower. So maybe we see a great sword build like with couple in reserve, which could be fun. All right, I'm going to go grab some water real quick. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back, baby. Let's go time. Yeah, Pwn, your game earlier was really fun. That was a great game. I, I think that was very winnable for you. If you had just played the objectives a little better in the beginning, um, maybe, maybe. It was close. Give me the, the leather salon gores, I know. Yeah, Pwn's game was probably one of the best ones we had at the stream. Um, our game one game against Vampire Counts was pretty bad. We got wrecked, but that Vampire game was really close. And then we had a good, a good game against the... Uh, Faction before that, the Chaos Dwarfs, that was a fun one. Oh man, I'm really curious about their builds though. I'm going to have to take a peek. Oh, this is interesting. That is not at all what I expected from the Empire. Subutai's build is pretty, pretty much exactly what I expected. But the Empire build is not what I was expecting. Okay. Not what I was expecting at all. Yeah, that was the thing, Pone, though. Cathay is, like, really bad at wrestling objectives. So if you just parked, like, some chorfs on the objectives, he wouldn't have gotten them, and you would have won on points at the end. You probably would have had the time you needed at the end to get the game. Because you were so far ahead on value, dude. You were ahead by so much at the end. It was crazy. Q 
He had like four or five thousand value. Man, I gotta say, I'm fiending for another Dune stream, dude. That was so fun. All the schemes, those are really good. So tomorrow we'll probably have Age of Empires and then um, the day after that, maybe another Dune stream. Something we'll see when everybody's available. All right, so checking to make sure the players are playing their games. They should be. Yep, looks like Platy and Ghoul are playing their match. Um, that matchup is going to be what? So taking a look here at what people declared. Uh, where is the single faction declaration? So Platypus is playing Demons of Chaos, which is really fun. And um, Ghoul is playing what? I have to say this tournament's been way more fun though. Zinch. Oh, so we have Zinch versus Doc on the other side. That's cool. So we have like a good guy bracket and a, like a villain bracket. That's fun. Are you going to publish your suggested uh, changes for CA? Yeah, I already, I already, um, I haven't published them yet, but yeah, I, I need to fine tune some things. I need to make it look nicer, but yeah, we're, we're getting there. Warcraft 3 on the horizon? Maybe. Could be fun. All right. Go look have fun to the champions. We have the Empire versus Grand Cafe. Uh, in my experience, very f favorite for a cafe, maybe like 60-40, but you know, again, it's winnable for the Empire. I've come close to winning it, and I have won a couple times, but it definitely feels like an uphill battle with how OP Zhao Ming is. Because you just like can't kill him, he just runs around and does whatever he wants. And uh, unless your opponent really like blunders, right? We will see. Doesn't the Age of Empires 4 DLC come out? Let's see. Uh, AoE 4 DLC release. Isn't it like on the... I thought it was like soon, isn't it? Uh, the expansion will launch on November 14th. Oh, okay, so we have like a month from now basically for that. Okay. Still a little bit of sweet time. You watch the Dune VOD. It's really fun, yeah, if you have a crew to play with. Even playing with strangers is pretty fun there. What I found about the Dune game is that if people start to lose, they tend to just leave. So you want to make sure you have some friends to play with. All right, guys. Here we go, baby. It's go time. Semi-finals of today's single faction tournament. We have the Empire versus Grand Cafe here on the top side of the bracket. Bottom side is currently being played between Zinch as well as Demons of Chaos. And we're going to see how this all unfolds here. Yes, yes. Yeah, Zhao is more problematic in land battle. Um, in Dom, it's it's strong, but yeah, he's he's very good. It's it's I, Again, I don't like policing individual characters. One of the things I think that I like about Dom is that players don't have to memorize all these like weird like rules and things like that. Um, all right, so let's take a look at the Empire Army. First thing we're going to see is the Hammer of the Witches. So this is obviously the Arwar Great Cannon, and it packs a punch for sure. Utility against Grand Cathay, um, I guess it can shoot characters, cavalry, flyers, things like that, but it feels incredibly vulnerable <clears throat> and uh, tough to defend. Swordsman mixed in with Halberds. Halberds going to be providing some utility AP, very squishy uh, in terms of armor, but okay HP and high melee defense. So, like a, a Halberd here could probably hold their own against a Jade Warrior just fine. We have a Pendulum Caster as well as the Silver Bullets and Boris Toddbringer up in the sky. Going to be doing battle with Xiao Ming, I would imagine. And uh, in the bushes, we do have a Mortar as well. I feel like it's Plague Penguin might learn the hard way that if you bring static artillery against Grand Cathay, the Crowman will feast, but. We'll find out here today. Now, looking at Subutai's build, it's, um, I would say, somewhat standard, I suppose. It's going to be Jade Warriors in the front, backed up by Halberds, couple Peasant Long Spearmen in reserve, the Iron Dragon, and uh, Righteous Lances away Jin. But the Righteous Lances will be able to uh, munch on Empire Heavy Cavalry, be very disruptive. Vulnerable against Cannon Fire, mind you, but aside from that, they can do some work for sure. Aside from that, we got a couple crossbows in the tree. Jade Warrior crossbows, excellent against the Empire. The Empire struggles horribly against dwarves, and Cathay can basically do most of the things dwarves can do with extra threats and mobility. So very, very scary indeed. Yeah, good build from old Subutai here. On the Glade of the Ever Queen, so begins the greatest battle of our time as the Empire and Grand Cathay do uh, some mortal combat here. Up in the sky, Boris Toddbringer. I don't hate the Boris pick here. You know, he's hard to snipe, and he can, he can keep the big man honest like he can attack Xiao Ming and not really give up too much because he himself also has very good quality healing with the Midland Runefang doesn't have any prerequisites for healing so he doesn't need to be in combat or anything like that he can just he can just be duking it out and constantly be attacking Xiao Ming Xiao Ming in a duel would probably win but you know the Empire does have some good mixed arms and things like that so all right what the hell is this cannon gonna shoot by the way that is what I'm genuinely curious about the Hammer of the Witches is a very unique pick 
It's a very niche pick. Um, you don't see it too often. Great cannons, I mean, against Cathay, maybe like artillery sniping is your idea, but the Crowmen are going to feast at some point. Subutai will probably call in a Crowman from right here and give it like a move order over the rock face, so it's really like hard to see. And then he comes down and ambushes you. And uh, yeah, it's hard to peel Crowman off. Empire Knights don't hit very hard, so <clears throat> you can definitely pay the price. Armies move it up. Zhao Ming cruising. Subutai going to be doing the classic uh, tree camping here as he moves out, but uh, he is going to have to move out eventually. So he's just trying to keep his units shrouded. And then he moves up and pushes up on the subjective while the Empire does the same thing. A single Empire Mortar. Uh, mortars are good against crossbows and various bow units like that, but they don't kill them quickly. It's more of like a long-term value investment. Silver Bullets are coming up. And Tadi could attack Zhao Ming. Looks like Zhao's going to go Dragon Farm. Uh, big HP advantage for Zhao. He's got 3,000 more HP. Tadi's stats are also worse. His damage is worse. I mean, Zhao Ming's pretty much superior as a combatant in basically every way. And ironically, he costs about the same as Toddbringer. It's, it's pretty funny. Um... But the Imperial Griffins are going to be getting buffed in the uh, upcoming. They should have like seven or 8,000 HP. It's pretty ridiculous how squishy they are. Silver Bullets nearby. Empire uh, parked on objective number three pretty comfortably. We don't see Chromen yet. And the Great Cannon is just going to start shooting at Peasants, which is a little bit of overkill. You know, a couple of Peasant Long Spearmen. The, the, they get the honor of being blasted by the dreaded Hammer of the Witches. Over here, Zhao Ming going to be running away, being poked by the Silver Bullets. So Super is going to be running into the trees. Really good play there by uh, Subutai with the Roast on the Halberdiers. It seemed like a bit of a miss, though. Maybe not an overcast. Didn't do too much damage. But yeah, Halberdiers, 550 gold. So any sort of poke you can get on them is going to be warranted. So see what I'm talking about? You do see ye old Chromen coming. So the Empress's Chromen going to be descending from the heavens. And honestly, if uh, if Plague Penguin just loses his hammer back there, it's basically going to be game blouses. Like, I think the Empire will be really behind at that point. Jacob, thank you for the 50. Wanted to say thanks for all the passion and skill you put into these streams. I love playing Total War 3, but I never thought I'd enjoy watching it even more. Keep it up for Sigma. All day, Jacob, and thank you for the donation. Greatly appreciate it, brother. You're about to see why you don't bring static artillery against Grand Cafe. Wagons, yes. Wagons are great here. Um, but static artillery is so hard to defend. Empire Knights move out, yes. But the sad thing is Empress's Crowmen will probably defeat Empire Knights in combat. So it's going to be very, very dicey indeed. Silver Bullets turning about face. Going to be going after Zhao Ming, the Iron Dragon. Jacob, once again, thank you, thank you. And we do see a Breath Attack going down in Silver Bullets as they do put some respectable firepower into the Iron Dragon here. And it looks like he's going to be retreating and the mortars should be online. Toddy pulling back here. Crowmen from all directions. Toddy's going to be needed to help deal with the Crowmen. Um, Empress's Crowmen will probably do a bombard on these Empire Knights first. Or they could just straight up bombard this. Looks like some bullets have been pulled about face, so the... Uh, Silver Bullets doing quite a bit of work this game, but looks like they could be getting uh, toasted right now. Is yeah, we see the we see the mortar crew running for the hills, and now we need to see the Empire Knights respond very quickly, or else it's just going to be uh, absolute disaster. So we do see the Chrome Men moving, and the Silver Bullets are going to be the point that could sell. But Subutai getting a ton of free value. Hammer of the Witch is is just such a weird pick. Overall, um, you know, I don't, I really hesitate to call games early, but as somebody who's an Empire main and has practiced this matchup quite a bit, um, I can tell you that. This is not going well for the old Penguin. I mean, he's going to have to pull out some big scrappy plays to get back in this game. Uh, the Crowman basically just farmed both of his expensive artillery pieces for free. And now, you know, Cathay is going to have the advantage with having the better quality infantry. And I mean, maybe if Zhao Ming just like got trapped here and died. But again, that's going to be a pretty tall order for sure. Silver Bullets are also basically dead. Empire Knight's trying to trap him in. Toddy should come in and try and pin in the Iron Dragon. That would be probably one of the only ways that you could do that. But overall, um, you know, we'll have to see. So Empire Knights running up there, and it looks like the old Spearmen going to be trying to push back the Cathay forces. The Empire does manage to have the objective advantage. Uh, but yeah, another nice breath attack from the Iron Dragon. Iron Dragon going to be going after the Grey Wizard. And up in the sky, we see the Crowmen looking to feast on something. I'm not quite sure what, but they are going to be hunting for those bad boys. Nice pendulum there. That was a really clean pendulum there by the Penguin. As some Empire Heavy Cavalry going to be moving up. But there's a perfect counter for them, literally sitting right here. Subutai, when he does notice, is going to be able to dive those uh, Heavy Cav and basically just wreck them. And um, it's crazy that the value is even this close, that it's like only a 1,000. Um, but it's going to get worse. It's going to get way worse. Without those artillery pieces, you're paying the troll toll. Empire Knights, do run into the Empress's Crowmen, might be able to get the kill on those. And it looks like the Mantide is going to be pushing up on all fronts. Empire Knights pulling back to countercharge those Empress's Crowmen. And now we get more Empire Knights being called out as a beautiful breath attack goes down from Subutai once again. So side point's probably going to flip here. Toddy trying his best on the side to shut down the Jade Warrior crossbows. And this is certainly uh, a neighborhood he's going to have a good time with. Toddy's going to be 
Very, very strong against these. So there they go. And we do see the Jade Warrior crossbows getting karate chops. Here we do see more crossbow pressure. State Troopers going to be getting melted. And um, yeah, I mean, he's keeping the value kind of close. Like Subutai does have that back pocket healing on jumping, which is just really, really disgusting. Certainly something I'm very, very um, leaning towards banning in future tournaments because it's just really stupid. On the far side, we do get the Righteous Lances away Jin going after the Empire Knights. Empire Knights going to be paying the troll toll. And uh, overall, yeah, just getting wrecked, just not having a good time. We do get some Lance Demis coming out. This has been a tech that Empire players have been trying against like Dwarves in Cathay. In theory, they wreck Cathay Cavalry and can also kill the infantry effectively. But Demi Lance is usually a little bit underwhelming in my experience. They do get the charge and sure, they might kill some of these Crowmen or whatever. But yeah, it's, it's not going to be easy. Back objective still held by the Sons of Sigmar. Grenade launchers definitely aren't a bad idea either. Like if somebody's just mouth breathing here and just kind of sitting with some infantry, you could just bring a grenade launcher out and start clearing those out. Granted, Crowmen are such an excellent counter against them. It's um, it's it's tough. It's very, very tough. The Zhao Ming is taking a little bit of work. A Grey Wizard here being hunted down by the Iron Dragon. So he's going to be tail whipping that bad boy. So he flees the scene. And now we get more Halberdiers moving up. Empire Knights cruising for a bruising. Looking to chase back the big man. And uh, the objective still being held by Grand Cathay. They just have such a strong stranglehold on it. Uh, Jade Warriors with Harmony. Jade Warrior crossbows with Harmony as well. Toddy going to be descending from the heavens to do battle with the old Zhao Ming, the Iron Dragon. But yeah, you really need wagons in this matchup. Wagons are quite good. Although Cathay Grand Cannons can take them down, but a lot of Cathay players just don't take Grand Cannons anymore. Um, mortar Wagons are also surprisingly good here because Chromite can't really kill them effectively and then you uh, can put good Mortar Fire down. It's weird to say that Mortar Wagons are good, but in this situation they are. So yeah, Empire is basically folding up on most fronts. Uh, granted, over here we do see a big... Resurgence of Empire Heavy Cap play. Um, we do know after, you know, Plague Penguin's been in the top 16 for several seasons in the history of uh, Total Tavern and very, very good cap control. Going to be trying to ninja this point, but Iron Hail Gunners are here. We do also have Righteous Lances away Jin, so the Empire Knight's probably not going to have the best time here against those Righteous Lances. On the backfield, Toddy pretty much in control, or not Toddy, excuse me, Xiao Ming, as the mortars are back online. So those mortars from like 45 minutes ago are uh, are back they, they've got 174 value and they're pissed baby they're they're showing showing they are out for vengeance empire knights for jade war lancer is a very very even little duel looks like the objective might start to flip plague penguin scrapping really really well in the empire cab play toddy's going to be cruising over we do also see the gray wizard probably going to get a pendulum on top of the iron hail gunners if they can we do have spearmen in the shields battling against jade warriors jade warriors will eventually win that and now we get some great swords coming out which i don't disagree with i think the great sword pick is nice could we see the Empire pull this game back with just super scrappy micro? I, I have to say, I would be very impressed if that was possible, but looks like it's going to be a tall order for sure. Righteous Lance is still pretty healthy. It looks like there are going to be some Onyx Chromen descending from the heavens. No Pendulum action yet, and the Demis with Lances probably need to go after the Righteous Lances if they can. On the other side, we do get some Great Swords moving out. The great Swords are good against Cathay Troopers if they are not getting shot. Great Swords are very, very weak against missiles and uh, are going to be getting just annihilated by the uh, Jade Warrior Cross with Becker. So overall, the little Greatsword split push is cute in theory, but um, in principle, it's probably just not going to work out there. Empire does have the back objective and is maintaining a little bit of a points lead. Toddy and company doing good against Jade Lancers, and we do see the Spearman doing okay here. Um, unfortunately, the Iron Dragon is still just cackling all the way to the bank, and there is a 2,000 value lead for Grand Cathay, which is going to be incredibly tough to come back from. Greatswords, despite having 91 models, very low in leadership. And will be dying to these crossbows. Granted, one of the crossbows almost out of ammunition, so maybe the great swords will get a bit of a second life there. We'll have to see. So here they come, cruising for a bruising. Demogriff knights with lances are routed off. Toddbringer in a battle with the Iron Dragon, and he's doing pretty respectable damage. Probably about 800 value, I would guess. Yeah, about 700 value so far in this game. He's mainly been fighting like cheap halberds and all those different things like that. But we do see the Empire moving up with great swords. Going to be trying to get a bit of a second wind here. On the backside, some uh, state troopers trying to ninja that objective. But Grand Cathay, its value lead is really starting to show on the battlefield as they just have more and more stuff. And like Zhao Ming's healing hasn't even procced yet. I don't think it even will. The Empire player doesn't have any way of really sniping him or anything. Uh, great swords might hold this back point. We do see them here. And these Chad swords over here, able to cut through these Jade Warrior Halberds pretty easily. And uh, unfortunately for the Empire, they're not going to have a good time versus these crossbows. So the crossbow is going to clear them out. So back objective fighting for the Sons of Sigmar. They are up in points, so they have plenty of time to scrap. But like, man, the Empire basically lost like 2,000 gold immediately in the beginning. They lost the silver bullets and they lost the extremely expensive Hammer of the Witches. Cannons aren't really that good against Cathay in general. Because Cathay doesn't like, I mean, artillery shading is one thing, but yeah, it's just not that good. Cathay usually has a ton of good quality infantry. 
And the mass that they do have is usually like these dragons, which can just dodge cannons with good micro. So overall, this is not a matchup in which I think cannons are good. And uh, the, the artillery position of the Empire folding was just... It is winnable for the Empire. It's very Cathay favored, but it is it is doable. And in this case, I just think the build wasn't that good here from the Plague Penguin, despite playing very well this tournament. I just think the build was off. And, um, you know, against a player like Subutai, who's just like the Dark Lord of playing meta, Subutai's got to bring the sweatiest, most meta build, the most degenerate things you can find, and, and really just push you to the limit, right? So uh, you need to have you need to have the proper answers for that. So a couple guns coming back in. Silver Bullets are back. Greatsword's still fighting up at the point, but the Chrome are just so excellent at shutting down static artillery pieces, so you really have to use... Um, you have to use these, like, ground-based, uh, or I should say wagon-type type shooting to really uh, hold your own there. Up at the point, Toddy's trying to fight. Um, any ninja on the backside? Nope. Looks like it's just a complete punishment. Uh, crossbow's pushing off the greatswords here. It's a triple cap. Subutai's going to be pulling ahead on points. And at this point, he should just tap out. GG, well played. GG, well played. Yeah, good play on both sides. But the Empire player had good micro, but the build was extremely weak. Um, extremely weak. Toddy is not good there either. Um... Just a lot of things were off with that one for sure. Wagons would have been good. They can control a lot of this. They can also like not give a shit about crossbows. So um, yeah, at the end of the day, it was just a build loss for Plague Penguin. Um, Demi Halberds, though they're kind of cute in theory, they usually don't pay for themselves in that matchup. I've tested it many, many times. And uh, yes. Oh yeah, you always go mass wagons in this matchup. I think like three or four. And sometimes like you can go like Sunmaker, um, four wagons and like, a pist and, like one or two Pistoliers. And the, the Crowman, with if you have good net control, they will never get to your Sunmaker. So there's ways to play artillery against Cathay still, but it's it's micro intensive. But overall, that was not it. GG, well played. All right. So let me check the other side and see if they're looking done. And where are we at? It looks like Ghoul Baby did win. All right. So let's do this and invite players here. And Ghoul Baby defeated Platypus on the other side. Interesting. Interesting. All right, outstanding. Go like have fun. I don't know what Ghoul's playing. This should be fun. Subutai doing Cathay proud for sure. For sure. All right, so let's look around here. Taking a look. I know Subutai's doing pretty good on the leaderboard this season, I think. Let's go ahead and check. A lot of tournaments. This is our tournament today. Um, then we have our host, Grom Brindle, who is... Just posted like three or four tournaments, which is pretty cool. Currently, number one player is Tim the Wilder. Number two is House Cat of War. Serkia at number three. Hadri is at number four. Catholic at number two, uh, five. Berserk at number six. Ghoul Baby, who's currently playing right now, is at number uh, seven. So we have the number seven ranked player of the season in the world uh, playing right now. Noctrum at number eight. Leech Lord at nine. Myself at number 10. Uh, and then we have Platypus down here at 11, Sleepy Lion, Reginald. And so Subutai has not actually won a tournament yet this season. So this is a, a big one for him. This, if Subutai wins this, he's going to be getting sent to the top 16, which is pretty cool. Yeah, Zinch versus Cathay. Pretty fun. I'm excited for this. The premium DLC matchup, I know. It is. Honestly, I don't feel Zinch is that OP. Like, I, I don't mind playing against Zinch. Cathay is a little harder. But Cathay can be beat by a lot of Haggard factions, actually. Um, but yeah, here it comes. Let's see how this goes. Let's just see how this goes. All right, all right. Like, I think Zinch is rocking what? Yeah, Zinch is at a 51% win rate. They're not, like, oppressive. And Cathay is a little bit higher. Cathay is, like, borderline OP. They're, like, they're like 54 55%. Yeah, so we'll see what they do. The map, uh, let's get the map for the last matchup. This is the grand finals for today's tournament. Again, thank you guys all for joining. It's been super fun. We got to practice Skaven. You know who actually wrecks Grand Cathay? Like straight up is Skaven. Skaven just just absolutely dome Grand Cathay from my experience. Although with Chroman, it might be different now. Um, Imperial Road, okay. <clears throat> Having, uh, yeah, Anticity, I, he pretty much quit Total War. He, I, I know he was doing it on YouTube for a while, but... Uh, I would imagine some IRLs have come up or maybe it wasn't, you know, accomplishing everything that he wanted. I, I don't know. Maybe burn out. You know, he's playing for a long time. A lot of people burn out, you know. A lot of people come and go. It's just the nature of the beast. Will we see the dreaded Disc Sorcerer Lord uh, in the Blue Scribes? Definitely not. 
The Discord, maybe, um, to summon Chaos Spawn, but I don't think you're going to be seeing the uh, the Blue Scribes, no. Blue Scribes would just be, like, such a meme. Yeah, it would just be... It would just basically be, like, throwing the game, essentially. Oh, it's so hot and sweaty in here today, man. I thought it was winter already. Jeez, we're, we're like, you know, kind of deep in it. XMT versus RTK. Yeah, memes for sweat. Well, Ghouls, Ghouls usually plays pretty serious, though. Ghouls is not a memer. So we'll see what happens. We will see what happens. Hey, Drew saying last I heard Anticity made a Rust channel. Yeah, I think he wanted to do a Rust channel. Maybe thought that would be a more uh, lucrative market. I'm not sure. I have no idea. Rust is a Rust is a wild game. I used to play that back in like 2014, 2015. That shit was crazy. Oh my God. Those games are fun though, for sure. Like the Rust style games, like the... Uh, that thrill of the hunt and like losing all your stuff and like, you know, defending your lairs. It was a, it was a good time. Uh, Tim the Wilder saying, oh, this matchup is pretty great for Grand Cuthe. We're going to have to kick Subutai from RTK <laughs> if he loses. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Yeah, Ghouls is a great player. He's very good. So is Subutai. They're both top tier tournament players. Um, Subutai looking to get his first tournament win of the season. And if he does, he is going to be, uh, Jumping into the top 16 players in the world right now. So that would be pretty cool. Bob, thanks for being a member for that long, by the way. Professor Pone has laid down the decree. Tim has spoken. So if Subutai loses this, then it's uh, it's it's the end of the road. His RTK membership is being revoked. Yeah, Warhammer 3's launch was really bad, Martin, for sure. Wiped a bunch of uh, people who like to do videos. To be fair, there wasn't that many multiplayer people in the, in, to begin with. Like, people who do explicitly multiplayer, I mean, you have, let's see. So, I know there was, I obviously do multiplayer, Dov still covers it, Rubber Duck of War was really fun. You know, I, I for a lot of people, I think it's just other things come up in their life and, you know, the amount of time they maybe invest into the, it doesn't like necessarily like, yeah, like IRL, people having kids and things like that, it's... um. Yeah, multiplayer never had a lot of people. And then there's folks who kind of do multiplayer, like like tips videos, but they don't really dive into the competitive aspect of things. I think Zarekovic still does some like Total War videos every now and then, but they're more, they're not necessarily purely multiplayer focused. It's like campaign and multiplayer, like just general tips of how to play the game, which are really good. Um, Indy Pride, Milk and Cookies, he does more like showcase stuff. Yeah, he'll do like battles, but they're usually more flavor focused and more cinematic, which is really cool also. Doesn't really dive into like competitive multiplayer too often. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's not a not a whole lot of multiplayer people in general. But yeah, the, the launch of this game was terrible. It definitely killed a lot of momentum. But we've re we've slowly rebuilt it, you know. Um, but yeah, it's like the the game three launch was really really poorly done. It was really poorly done, and it certainly hurt. Yeah. That's cool, Bob. I, out of region, stop playing though, Bob. Yeah, he's not even playing right now, to my knowledge. I haven't seen him. He said he was taking a break from the game, so. The barrier to entry is really high. It is. It's it's one of the big problems. I think CA needs to consider doing something like making all the factions free for multiplayer. Um, those type, Yeah, Human Boy, of course. Yeah, Human Boy does land battle, though, mostly. Um, he doesn't do any DOM or anything like that. Yeah, he's he, Human Boy does quite a bit for land battle. Then in Warhammer 2, we also had my son, Herbert Walker. He was a really good tournament host. He hosted like super consistently, like every weekend, like I would have a tournament and he would have one. There was like just, and his was really good too. It was nice, um, really consistent. But to be fair, we have a more active tournament scene now than we've ever had. The amount of tournaments that we host through Total Tavern in our community, it, it would eclipse the amount of tournaments we've ever had in the past. Um, in terms of participation, Overall, maybe slightly less because the community has been partially split in terms of people who prefer land and land battles and people who prefer Dom. Um, so yeah, that's that's a little bit of an unfortunate thing. It would have been nice if it could have all been kept together and we could have had that, but yeah, it's it's a shame. There's a, a guy named Nerd War Room that does competitive multiplayer. That's cool. Does he does he like just play on ladder or does he actually play in tournaments? Because when you say competitive multiplayer to me, it, it means tournaments. It's like, it's, you know, playing on ladder is more of like a casual approach for sure. Um, I'd love to check out his channel though, for sure. 
Um, when are you going to go join Professor Pwn for another session of Baldur's Gate? Yeah, we got to do that. To be honest, there's like other games I'd rather play, but I'm certainly still going to do it. Yeah, we're going to play sometime soon. Um, man, yeah, the amount of the amount of um, money you need to get in is like it's just it's just brutal. To in this game, like the, all the DLCs. Granted, you can do it budget and just pick like three or four factions you want to specialize in and focus on them. But yeah. Hey, Norex, I'm glad to hear. It. Yeah, the yeah the Sun Tzu guys have been hosting some tournaments on the side. I saw. Uh, Zhao is pretty busted. You know, there's been some debate about banning his item. Um, it's really, I don't like to ban and police individual characters. It's tricky. Um, but yeah, like, uh, we'll see. I'm going to I'm gonna have a discussion about that. Imagine current, yeah, if we had gotten current domination mode with, with total tavern quality maps on launch... I think I think like it it would have been a huge success. I think people would have rallied around it and it would have been good. But unfortunately, we got a really haggard version of Dom at launch. Um, but it wasn't just that. It was also the fact that we had no Immortals Empires. The comeback mechanic was garbage, absolute garbage. So there was a lot of things that were that were tricky, you know. Yeah. A oh, multiplayer is great, man. Yeah, it's it's always a good time. Guys, all right, here we go, baby. Let's get it going. Let's have some fun. Here we go. You know, th that's an interesting comment, Matt. And this will be the last thing I'll, I'll talk about before I get into commentary mode. Is that so? CA's monetization relies on power creep to sell. Personally, I don't think it's intentional power creep, rather than I think it is negligence and like different teams working on things. Like, I don't think that like the CA developers and balancing people go into a DLC and are like, let's make a broken ass unit. So, and price it accordingly. So, um, just to sell it. I, I think it's just like, they have different teams working on things, people coming and going, like maybe people who just aren't the most privy to unit balance. I, that's, I, I, I don't think it's like some malicious thing in that regard. I could be wrong. But I think it's mainly just just a little bit of negligence. Yeah. Like if you had somebody on... Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know like how you can look at actually the ambushers in both campaign and multiplayer and be like, how is this thing 200 gold less than a shade? Better in pretty much every regard. It's like a tier like one or two unit in campaign. Well, you can get it like right away. And it basically overshadows the entire roster in campaign as well. Like I don't understand how things like that get through. It's It's just like... And it's not that it's not even that many units to review. I feel like if you just had one person who really was familiar with unit balance looking at all that, they could be like, yeah, no, that's that's nonsense. You know, that's nonsense. But they just don't have that, I guess. I don't know what it is. All right, guys. So here we are in the tournament. Let's have some fun. It's going to be Ghouls facing off against Subutai with the premium matchup. Yes, yes. And for the forces of Grand Cathay, it's going to be Jade Warriors with a whole bunch of bows. So we got Peasant Archers into the Sunset, Xiao Ming the Iron Dragon, of course, and uh, more bows in the backfield. So yeah, it's a very, very standard army. It's like a Harmony Battle line. So it's going to be Jades as well as Peasant Archers, and that is about it. Now on the other side, it is going to be Chaos Warriors of Zinch, Silver Shields, Durable against Poke. Obviously, they like to party, and Kairos. Um, Kairos is good, but I can't help but think Kairos might not. Well, I guess he can absorb a lot of missiles and then just regrowth himself, which feels pretty good. Uh, one thing I'm very, very shocked to not see is uh, Aeacold Hellbrass. Aeacold is like the Terminator of Grand Cathay Infantry. You just park him on that middle point. Even the Iron Dragon isn't going to be able to kill him effectively. So, Collins here are going to be the Righteous Lances of Wei Jin. So those bad boys are on the way up. And uh, yeah, it looks like they're going to do some battle. Looks like they're going to do some battle. Yeah, we've so while we wait for the battle to start, we can keep having this discussion. I've been... This game, like the game... <sighs> In terms of like modern RTS games, like the diversity of factions, like the range of flavor and like how fun it is to play all these different like characters and scheme strategies with them. It's like this game has such insane multiplayer potential, but it's just been squandered over the years. And now that we're at its twilight, I can't help but think like there might be a little bit of effort going into it. But, you know, yeah, I just like it, it's so close to just being good. You know, it's it's always there, but it just never quite gets there. It's a shame. It's a shame. I mean, the game's still great and all, but it's definitely more of a spectacle than like a super high level. I mean, there is a competitive scene, of course, but 
Wow, look at that on the other side. The Shrieking Rays. So that's a bound ability on them. It's the Lamprey's Bite. And that just absolutely wrecked those peasant archers. My goodness, that was nasty. Now, Zhao Ming's going to be hunting down some peasant horsemen, or marauder horsemen, excuse me. And he's going to be throwing some javelin fire. Um, Crowman, the Empress's Crowman, going to be looking to drop some bombardments on some Chaos Warriors. And now, Zinch, are they going to push up with these Chaos Warriors? Looks like they're kind of chilling out here a little bit. So they could definitely move up and do a little bit of razzle-dazzle there. There's going to be a blue fire down the line against Subutai. He does reform ranks to mitigate the effectiveness of that damage. Meanwhile, Horsemen going to be retreating this way and still just dragging the Empress's Crowman through the mud. I do like the Horsemen play, depending on how clean the micro is. They can definitely be good. They do have a little bit of armor centering on them with the Warp Flame debuff. It does lower armor down, and they're doing an, a good job kiting back these units here, which is definitely quite nice. Now, Lamprey's Bite, nowhere to be seen quite yet. The thing about the Shrieking Sky Rays is they can get wrecked by Crowman super hard. Subutai already pretty hard in the paint. Ah, oh, a bit of a blunder here. We do see the Marauder Horseman engaging against Crowman, which is a big mistake. Or no, the Righteous Lances, so... Ghouls with a bit of a micro mismanagement right there. So the troll toll has been paid. And now Zhao Ming, the Iron Dragon, going to be chasing down the Shrieking Sky Rays. And I don't know why Zinch isn't pushing up their infantry yet. We haven't seen them moving. Okay, now they're moving with some warriors. A little bit here. Cairo's still juking. And in the bushes, we do have some Zangors hiding, which I like. I like the idea of a Zangor pressing into the backfield because Crowmen won't be exceptionally good against Zangors, right? Like, Chaos Factions don't have as bad of a time against Zangors. Or, excuse me, Crowmen. It's mainly factions that have to like defend shooting and different things like that so here they go the chromatic abominations chaos warriors of zinch moving up and more chaos warriors going to be heading up that way shrieking sky rays over on the side that one did hit but those were the armored crossbows so not going to be doing quite as much damage zangor is still waiting in the bushes they haven't gotten the um they haven't heard the the, the call of zinch yet they're still waiting in the trees cairo still just cackling and running around while a couple horsemen still skirmish both players uh pretty equal on value and yeah, Zinch is not doing bad, though. You basically just ignore Zhao Ming. Um, and it's honestly kind of the strategy before. People would usually not try and kill Zhao Ming. Like, the dragons are just very tanky. They would usually be something that you would mitigate. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's Trixie Hobbits's. So, Chromatic Abominations are pretty rad. They do, of course, have shields, and they trade pretty well into the Peasant Archers. But they're going to want to retreat when they get into melee here. Zangor's coming out of the bushes here, so the old flanking is going to be on. And I would have liked to maybe seen another Zangor here. I really like that flank. I think it's quite good. Fire going down, it's going to be a blue fire, and it does tickle the halberds and also does some decent damage against the peasant archers. And now we see the Chaos Warrior Legion overwhelming the middle. And I am genuinely shocked that we are not seeing Aeokold Hellbrass. Aeokold is so damn good. Um, definitely one of the best units on the roster. But, you know, everyone has their unique playstyle, right? So it's going to be a, a little bit different. So Sky Rays are on the run, being hunted by Chroman nonstop. Looks like they're going to be diving down to support those Chaos Warriors. The Righteous Lances are going to be getting attacked by a good old slideshow Kairos here. Screamers will provide some anti-large, and a lot of those models are going to be trapped. Subutai could lose the old Righteous Lances here, or at least lose a fair amount of models on those units. And we do see the Zangors flanking around the side. So here comes the Zangors, and it is time, ladies and gentlemen. Here they come. They got the old Silver Shields. They're fast, they're furious, and they will bash these crossbows into the Shadow Realm. Most of the Collins here, I would expect actually more Zangor action. Chaos Warriors are pretty chad. They're very durable troopers. The Zinch Warriors do have their little shields, and more Zangor's going to be diving around the side. Chaos Warriors uh, should crush Jade Warriors in most engagements. Honestly, the fight's looking pretty good for Zinch. Uh, they do have the double objective with a little bit of pressure on the back, and we do see Jade Lancers being called in to try and fight off the uh, Zangor's, but Zangor's do not give a shit about Jade Lancers. <clears throat> their high armor and their uh, decent sustained combat stats will honestly probably like trade upwards into like both these units here. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So we'll see how that goes. More horsemen skirmishing about. Righteous Lance's evasion being melted down. And Crowman here diving after the Marauder Horsemen. But Zangors get called in. And uh, they are able to grab a lot of the Empress's Crowman and start taking those models down very, very quickly. So we will see how that all unfolds here as the Marauder Horsemen pull back. Continuing to javelin. Middle objective still being held by Chaos Warriors. But Subutai is wearing it down a little bit with the Iron Dragon. No Aeokold pick, which is so strange. I'm going to keep harping on that. I really think like Aeokold in the middle would have already killed these Jade Warrior Halberds and it would just really take the pressure off. Chaos Warriors being surrounded on some fronts, but overall cackling pretty well. Zangors being rear charged by Crowmen. Their leadership is shaken. This could be an opportunity for them to go down here. It looks like a Zinch army ability going to be used here. I think that might be the ult and that could be a really good one if Subutai doesn't react to it. That could hit basically everything. So yeah, it's nice. Yeah, uh, Doom Knights are actually good in this matchup. Having a single Doom Knight to shut down Crowman is, is very, very good. But that was a good Zinch Army ability. Did nuke the Zangors, but also was kind of a three for one right there. So you paid one, you pay one, you get the price, uh, price of three. 
So those units do get melted a little bit. And on the middle objective, I would imagine Zinch is going to keep recycling units to try and win on points. But now we do see Grand Cathay starting to flip the capture weight on the middle as some of the Chaos Warriors do get a little bit worn down. And Cathay calling in and more Jade Warrior Halberds in the back. The big chicken up in the sky. That's a sweet blue fire. Really, really nice cast there. Does take down quite a few of those Jade Halberds. Actually 15 models and a lot of HP. As Old Kairos going to be hammering down Peasant Archers as well. So the back objective in a little bit of danger as well. Zinch maybe could do a little something something here with these Zangors. Although there are Peasants who might be able to shoot them in the back and wear them down. Chaos Warriors have arrived up to the point. And, you know, the Iron Dragon's only gotten 600 value so far. He's, he's not like... He's only really problematic if you have to focus him and kill him. But Zinch in this situation, their playstyle is, is just from completely ignoring him, basically. Which is really what you want to do with, like, how he currently is. Zangor's collapsing on Peasant Archers. Kairos Fate Weaver doing some Space Jam shit. Oh, looks like he's going up in the sky. So Kairos going to be flying around looking to cast another Blue Fire. Really good magic usage of this game. Those Blue Fires have been pretty on point. Granted, that one didn't do a whole lot of damage. That was probably one of the more underwhelming ones. Now we get Knights of Immolation coming out, which I love. Knights of Immolation, a pretty nasty unit at shutting down archers. It's heavily armored. It annihilates Crowmen in combat. There's a lot that it does. It should, at this point, try and get the Bombard on top of the Jade Warrior Halberds to switch the capture weight there. That would be the play. And it looks like a couple Zangors going to be running up through the middle to push back many of these archer units. And Zinch actually probably needs to do a little bit of housekeeping. Housekeeping. The fact that these units haven't been unsummoned, I do think, is a little bit of a problem. Because Zinch is going to start running out of good quality units to send up to the middle. And um, Cathay, well, it seems to be going through units a little bit more effectively here. So, Chroman getting bashed. No surprises. The Empress's Chroman going to be taken to town by the old Knights of Immolation. And now the Knights of Immolation probably going to make a bit of an effort to go after various bow units. Although they could get the bombard here. I think that would be very, very strong. Capture weight in the middle, barely holding on, and we do see Zinch calling in Chromatic Abominations. Unsummons coming down to the Chaos Warriors, so you can see the lack of unsummons could be a bit of a problem here for Ghoul, as the Knights of Immolation do get that surround. Um, not the best opportunity for them, though. They're fighting Halberds. Halberds will do well against them, and also the big man is there, too. Zhao Ming, the Iron Dragon's, uh, you know, he's cackling all the way to the bank there. Kairos running interference, just trying to shut these Halberds off the point. On the backside, Zangor is still causing a bit of disruption. And we do see Subutai pulling a bit of a value lead. He's currently up by about a thousand value, give or take, because the Doom Knight's looking for opportunities wherever they can to pick off archers. And now the peasant archers for sure are going to get feasted on by these uh, cosmic surfers. This is each faction. So there they go. Really, really cool, man. The, the Doom Knights are just so rad. Middle objective is probably going to flip. Chromatic Abomination is not like the Fideous unit. you got to be really on top of uh, recycling your Zangors in this matchup, as well as your Chaos Warriors. Both of whom are starting to run out of steam a little bit. Here we do see the Peasant Horseman intercepting the Chromatic Abominations. Good veteran play there by Subutai. He's able to overrun the old Chromatic Abominations. And uh, yeah, it does keep them from getting to the point, which is going to allow that one to flip. Now the high ground point's getting a little bit wild over here. There are some Zangors and some Chaos Warriors who've come out of the bushes looking to flip that objective. Chromen here are going to be getting hunted by the Doom Knights. And uh, they should get it done. We'll see. Yeah, you can see the Chromen immediately start to get bashed. Zinch going to be calling out Chaos Knights. Okay. So they're going to be trying to play a mobile game, but I don't know how well that's going to go. There's a lot of pointy sticks here for the forces of Grand Cafe. We see a lot of halberds, a lot of spheres all over the battlefield. It's going to be tricky. So Cairo's current value looking at 1,800. Xiao Ming, not bad. He's currently sitting at about 1,300. So he's not paid for himself yet, but he's, he's doing his thing. And here comes the Chaos Knights. Where are they going to go? It looks like there's going to be an army ability getting dropped. Tier 3 Zinch ability dropped on top of the halberds. Very nice, but there's still a lot of halberds, a lot of pointy sticks. And they are not going to go quietly. Any more warriors coming up? Not really. Just horsemen kind of defending the backfield. Zinch going for a bit of a desperation grab here. They do have a couple infantry pieces. Trying to fight these peasant horsemen on the point. 26 warriors and 35 zangors. Almost the equivalent of like half a unit. Give or take if you combine them both. And now the Chaos Knights have moved in to do battle versus the uh, crossbows. Which is great. But they do not want to be fighting Iron Dragon. Nor all these halberds come again. So these are Jade Warrior halberds. Which will just wreck them in combat. Um, knights do not want to be fighting pointy sticks. Right? So... Probably retreat here. I don't think staying with the Chaos Knights is the right play. Maybe if Kairos comes in and gets a terror out on those Halberds, it could be good. And Zeech is doing a good job with their elite units here, just kind of sweeping around the battlefield. But on the backside, it looks like um, Zeech has been uh, pushed, and they need to get just some good quality troops in. Looks like the Chaos Warriors are finally back in business. Chaos Knights just running about, hunting down archers where they can. Doom Knights chasing as well. And uh, Grand Cathay making a bit of a play for the back point here. I do like this by Subutai. It's, uh, he's uh, head on value. So these little, like, individual units that are kind of tough to deal with. I do like that a lot. I think it's a very, very clever girl play. So Doom Knights run him down. And the middle objective starting to flip a little bit for ye old Zinch. 
We do have Jade Lancers on the way in. Back point completely secured by Grand Cathay. Subutai needs to do some housekeeping here. He's got a couple units there that need to be sent back to the Shadow Realm. Unsummon's going down on both sides, so housekeeping by both players. And up at the high ground point, um, you better watch out. These peasants are going to get that point. Probably a Zangor callout will be the play for ghouls here, just to come and wreck these peasants. Would be my guess. Doom Knights duking it out versus the Jade Lancers. And it looks like a regrowth on top of the Doom Knights. It's a good play. They still have 16 models. But you're going to need to get that pretty soon here because those Doom Knights are taking massive, massive casualties. Um, in the backfield, we do see Chaos Knights chasing down Onyx Crowmen. And more Crowmen are going to attack them. But this is actually good for Ghoul. Um, having these Chaos Knights occupying two Crowmen units and just probably winning against both of them, potentially. Uh, depends if one of them's the ROR, but uh, it should be pretty strong. So back point in a little bit of danger. Um, no Zangor call-in. Ghouls is saving up for something. I don't know what he's saving up for, but he's going to need to get his back point. If he flips that back point, it's going to be really, really bad for him. So Kairos is back, and here we see the Zinchian warriors engaging against the last bastion of Grand Cathay soldiers here. So the Cathay troopers for sure are going to be losing here in a minute, so they're going to get taken down to Pound Town. In the backfield, we do have the Chaos Knights as well as the Doom Knights fighting together and um, probably trading pretty favorably um, against these Onyx Crowmen, who've actually earned a hell of a lot of chevrons already. So maybe not going to be the best fight in the world. But yeah, it looks like the Crowmen are losing it and Chaos might be able to come out victorious there. In the back, we do get some Zangors being called in. So not a single Marauder for Zinch, actually. So it looks like the uh, Zangors will stabilize that point. They will. So now it's going to be a matter of trying to wrestle the middle objective back against Iron Dragon. And Kairos is still very much alive too. He's at 2100 value. Iron Dragon probably sitting at a respectable amount of value. Also, Zangor is coming up to bully the point. And the Chaos backfield diving looks like it's running out of steam because some Halberds did arrive. So we do have the Jade Warrior Halberds who will for sure drag down a lot of these big uh, Zinchian guys. Yeah, I think at this point the Doom Knights are just trapped. You just got to let them stay and fight. They did a good job though because it's taken some of the momentum, right? Like, a lot of Cathay's assets are back here right now, and that's giving Zinch a little bit of play up on the front point. But Cathay is pretty tanky. It's, it's certainly hard to get him uh, off the uh, point here. So, and to come, Zangor's moving up. Zangor's pushing back these peasant long spears, and more Zangors are here. So, this is where Zinch gets its second wind when they get that big, big momentum of all these, like, good quality infantry. And the middle objective is starting to flip, largely due to the efforts of that Doom Knight squad back there and those Chaos Knights. So, they were able to hold quite a bit back. Looks like the single target Zinch ability going down. Didn't do a whole lot of damage. Kairos maybe going to run some interference. We'll have to see. Zangors and Zangors for the Zangor God. Obviously one of the best units on the roster here. And uh, here it comes. So Chaos Warriors bashing it away. They got their swords out for the Changer. Peasant Long Spears, not long for this world. Good interference here by Kairos. This is an incredibly solid play. And there is an element of Cathay just kind of like not having a ton of momentum outside of their Lord right now. Like... Now that we see the second wave of reinforcements coming in for Zinch, it could be a bit of a flip in momentum. Zhao Ming is like doing okay. He's paid for himself now. But Cathay's infantry are pretty crappy without support. So here comes a couple spears, a couple jade warriors being held back. Cairo cycle charging and running interference is really good. And Zinch might be able to get this. He might be able to work something here. We see the Zinchian infantry just dominating on the points. And Grand Cathay is really stuffed back here. Grand Cathay is one of the worst factions in the game at retaking objectives once they've lost them. So I, I think um, I think we could see Gould uh, pull this one out. Because he's a little bit behind on points though. Subutai is up by about 70 points now. But that's going to be rapidly changing. Does he make a play for the back objective? No, I don't think so. I think if you're Zinch right now, you just need to be really effective at summoning in and bolstering the middle with your good quality infantry. And just cackling all the way to the bank. So... We will see. We will see. Kairos Fate Weaver running snares. Look at that. Gaze of Fate going down. And then the Zinch Army ability. Dude, he is so on point with this right now. Yeah, that's a really money play. That's going to be getting rid of a ton of durable capture weight here. And those Jade Warrior Halberds are going to get wrecked. And you see how Kairos is just running interference? Zhao Ming's trying his best to clear the objective, but he's not like... I mean, he's a good fighter for sure, but he's not like just, just an absolute raid boss here. The Horsemen still skirmishing about. Really, really nice play there by Kairos Fate Weaver. And the Doom Knights and the Chaos Knights have been just so disruptive. You can see these guys, 1,600 value on Chaos Knights because they've been beating down Chromen mainly, but they're probably going to eventually meet their end here. Beautiful blue fire, nasty damage against those Jade Lancers. And now it's looking like Zinch is in a pretty dominant spot as they're about to pass them on points. We get more Zangors arriving and more Zangors coming up. And Zangors are not an easy unit to get rid of. Zhao Ming can only be in so many places at once. And it almost seems as if Cathay relied a little bit too much on Iron Dragon. Uh, would Wu Jing War Compasses have been good? I don't know. Hard to say. Zinch, though, really getting that good bump and grind. And Zinch has healing, too, remember. So despite the value difference, Zinch has been casting uh, regrowths, and their shields have been healing on various units. And look at this. A little bit of a ninja on the back point. Now, this is a big play, actually, because it forces Subutai to allocate resources here instead of the middle, which is what he needs to win. So this is, uh, this is very, very good. 
With the points being scrapped over, we do see Subutai with Zhao Ming trying to clear these units off, but his clearing power is very heavily diminished. Ghouls has certainly been playing like a uh, man possessed here today as uh, he continues scrapping here. Zangor's up in the point, a couple Zangors chilling here, and oh, it looks like Subutai with a little bit of back pressure as well. Definitely probably send the Zangors to the middle and then just keep the peasants at bay here with your Marauder Horsemen. We'll have to see if it's going to be enough. Can they win that fight? Yeah, you might actually need the Zangors. So before you know it, um, oh wow, he almost stole the back point too. He almost got that, guys. Yeah, value's off because it doesn't count army abilities. That's true. Yeah, the army abilities and the way it counts is a little bit buggy at times. But I think that the changer is going to clutch this one, guys. Grand Cafe still seems to be out of steam. Yeah, Yuan Bo might have been more effective here. Even uh, Miao Ying with the big vortexes to kill the Zinch infantry could have been better. But people get really set in their ways when it comes to using like OP units and then they forget the other options too. I'm not saying that happened here. But, um, you know, that, that is something that we've seen in the history of the game. So Zeech is pretty damn close to winning on just one point. Um, and I think they have the momentum. Grand Cathay looks like it's being folded back. The Chaos Knights and the Marauder Horsemen just routing down units all over the battlefield, riding down those pieces. And Zeech has looked like they got this. I didn't think Zeech was going to win this, actually. But, um, yeah, it, it's, it's looking like it's pretty good for them now. There was a point where it was looking pretty bleak with those Chaos Knights and Doom Knights. But once he got that second wave of troopers... After the unsummoning, I think that was enough to switch the momentum here. So Zhao Ming, the Iron Dragon, is currently uh, doing quite well. You see he's paid for himself 100%, but there's Cathay has no clearing power. There's no there's no good magic. There's no good artillery. There's no shooting. Uh, there's no bows online. There's nothing that can really clear out all these infantry. And now he wins on one objective. So from here, um, it's 80 points left and obviously about 200 points for Subutai. So if it's more than double, then, you know, uh, it's going to be a single cap situation. Blue Horrors on the way up, just capture weight, and uh, yeah, I think that's GG well played, man. What a crazy comeback. Wow. That's going to be a victory for Zinch. Ghoul's going to be clutching today's tournament, doing the changer proud. Zinch has been looking pretty reasonably balanced this patch. Aside from like Mutalith regrowth combos, I think in, they're at like 50, 52%. It's cool to see him. And yeah, no Aeacold. I really thought Aeacold would be the go-to there, but... Um, who would have thought the hidden MVP that killed the momentum was the Doom Knights and Chaos Knights? 1600 and 1600 value on both of those elite armored units. So that was really a lot of it. Yeah, it was a lot of it for sure. GG well played to both Ghouls as well as Subutai. Today's tournament is going to be won here uh, by Ghouls. And uh, yeah, it was good stuff. It was good stuff on both sides. Chromen being nasty, but Zinch does have options for them for sure. Uh, Jade Crossbows do get used sometimes. I'm a big fan of Jade Crossbows myself. Yeah, that was a great game, man. Good scrappiness. GG, well played to both players. Report score. And grats. All right. So before we close everything down today, I just want to sincerely thank you guys all for joining. If you enjoyed today's tournament, please do drop a like on the way out. It helps quite a bit keeping the old uh, Total War potato alive. And uh, thank you guys so much for the donations. We had a bunch of you guys who donated. Um, we got, let's see, Zyro here. We got Jacob, Bob, Sophie, Melody, Lord Bacon, Fast Winston, Tortoise, Dave, Stefan, Kite, um, Alzac, and uh, yeah, all of you guys, thank you. Amco as well in the very beginning. You guys rock, man. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time. That's it. We'll be back um, sometime soon. Tomorrow will probably be Age of Empires. The day after that will probably be Dune, and then we'll be back to Total War from there. It's kind of be like a rotation of streams at this point. So we'll be rotating between games because, yeah, it's fun. The spice of life, man. The diversity here, man. We got to go for it. All right. Take care of yourselves. See you later. You guys rock, man. Congrats to both players. Super Tile, get them next time, I'm sure. And that's going to be it for tonight.